guys, last, the last talk this evening is Rob B from the Fate 21 show and the Ashton Group. The reason why Rob is speaking last is because uh, basically the, the proactive nature of his talk and what he's going to be talking about with regards to Bailey. When you hear what Rob's got to say, the amount of work that this man's been doing is fantastic. Yeah, as in, it, it really is it's unbelievable and he's going to be putting that to you because we've, we've had talks today, they've all been proactive but it's, it's for a reason. Um, and Rob's going to explain to you what we hope will come from this when people start coming together and actually linking arms and start fucking up the bailiffs and everything mm -hmm. that goes with it, excuse me. Right, so what I will say is thanks to Rob for all the work that he's been doing because he is 24-7. Well done. Rob B, guys. Good to start. Uh, thanks, lots of new faces in the room. Love to see new faces, guys. Thank you very much. You know, I'm, I'm humbled. I uh, really am. We need more and more and more people. I mean, that's the bottom line here. We need more people. We've got most of the answers now. Uh, uh, we need more people helping out with research, more people helping out with uh, uh, challenging, more people just getting involved, more people writing letters, because the more letters land in these bastards' desk, right? And I swear to God, excuse me. Uh, the more letters land in these bastards' desk, the more we worry them. Okay, so if they get one letter a year from some dickhead in Wigan, don't worry about it. If they get ten letters a week, right, from all over the country, you start, you start getting the attention. Anyway, so uh, I've had three pints, which is above my limit, so if I start dancing naked and table, you don't answer it, right? uh, The objective of this, uh, getting all corporate on you, the objective of this is, uh, I'm not here to do an information dump, I try not to do that, it's up to you guys to educate yourselves, not me. You know, I'm here to inspire and motivate, it's all I'm trying to do just now. So the answers are out there. The internet is an amazing tool, right? So are these maybe these things, paper things called books, right? They're an amazing tool as well. Uh, what we ask people to do is don't follow the herd, please don't follow the herd. I'm just begging you, don't follow the herd, right? Follow where you think the answer is for you. Because that's what the answer will lie, okay? Uh, you've seen in the past there's been a few trends taking place and people have followed the trends and they end up going nowhere. And you've all stood with, you know, with a bunch of dicks, you know. Uh, <coughs> follow. So what I do is if, 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 if people go in that direction, I tend to go in that direction. Or I'll read the book and nobody else has read and I'll try and report back. I'll read the book, get the good bits out of it and report back. We all can do that. Just pick a book at random. Nobody else has done a report on it from archive.org. Or, that's a good website, by the way, to note down. Archive.org or something. Get an old book, look up a subject. City of London is a really good subject, by the way. Uh, Crown's another blindingly good subject. Uh, but look up these subjects, pick a book, and just report back. Don't keep it to yourself. Come on to one of the Skype chat rooms or one of the forums and just put the information out there, share that information with other people. Because if we're all sitting in our bedrooms, you know, wherever it is we do our research, keeping the stuff to ourselves, we're going to be doing this in 20 years' time. Right, we need to be sharing this information, guys. You know, the, I mean, the amount of information in this room is just incredible. But we, we need to pull it together and decide what we need to do with with that with that information. So, uh, I've spent the last week down south, and I've been uh, visiting my, my young nieces. I don't get to see them very often. I've got a chance to visit my young nieces. One's seven, one's five. They're adorable. Little buggers, but they're adorable, right? And uh, I think they've got my genes. Uh, but I'm reminded why we're doing this. It's not for me. I don't care. I'm a crusty old bugger. It's not for me. I don't care what happens to me. It's for the next generation. And certainly on behalf of my generation, I offer my sincerest apologies to these, these new generations that are coming up now because we have let you down so badly. Uh, I wouldn't say we're entirely... I was not at fault because I was a muppet. I knew nothing. I, I knew nothing, I was brainwashed, I, I didn't know how the world worked, I believed the guys were telling me what to do, were doing to my interests, I believed the lies, I believed all the nonsense, and uh, as soon as since I've started looking into this material myself and started awakening myself, that uh, I feel uh, obliged now to repair some of the damage, the little bit I can, that my generation has done. And I'm just one man, I'm just a noisy bugger, but I'm one man, and... Uh, so I mean that, that, that's, that's what drives and motivates me is because I look at these kids today and I just go, what hope have you got? We were, yeah. I think some of you, when you were when you were a kid, what was the price of petrol when you were a kid? It is. You speak up, please, bro. What? When you were a kid, what was the price of petrol when you were a kid? Fifty-six p. Fifty-six p. Anyone else? Seventeen p. Seventeen p. 
Yeah. How much are you paying? I paid one pound thirty four point nine yesterday. Okay, these kids have never known what cheap petrol is. That's just one example. Yeah, we've let them down. We've let them down. They've, they're going to think this is normal. It's not normal, guys. Trust me, this is really not normal. And uh, so we need to be fixing some of the, the damage that we've allowed to happen in our watch. And remember, we are, we don't own the world. We're only here as temporary tenants, and we've got to hand the building over once we're finished to next the next tenants. And we find it over in shit state. Okay. Anyway, so the other thing that motivates me and motivates me from the start has motivated me from the start. Uh, at school, uh, I've not talked about this before, but at school I moved around a lot to different schools. So I was always a new guy. I was always a victim of the bullies. Uh, red hair, you know, usual nonsense. Uh, because I was a new guy, I was an easy target. Until one day, I was think I was 14 years old, and uh, this the biggest guy in the school came over and started bullying me quite badly, and I knocked him out. I hit him. I lost it, and I hit him. And I saw the fear in his eyes, and that changed my life. So I realised it's okay taking it and taking it. When you turn around and hit them back, you see that fear in their eyes, and you never fear them again after that. Uh, so I, I, I sort of made it a, if I see somebody getting bullied, I like to step in, you know. Uh, some people deserve to be bullied, but that's a different thing, you know, it's, you know, the, the guys in the government, etc. But I mean, to see, see, see somebody who's innocent getting bullied, I'm, I'm an older brother, uh, and I stepped in, I've, I've stepped in to help my younger brother a few times, to, luckily he never got bullied, because I, I like to think I was in the background. That's what we all should be doing. We are the older brothers, older sisters, with this, these other generations. We're beholden to stop them getting bullied. And who can say that the letters are getting, or stuff they're getting from these government departments, and utility companies, and credit card companies, and banks. That is nothing more than pure bullying. It really is. It's using fear, it's using terror, it's using threats, it's actually using violence in some cases, uh, to get these people to, 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 to uh, uh, subvert to the, the will of the other side. And I just, that's, that's bullying. I don't care what anyone says, that's all it is, you know. And uh, I must admit, I ap apologise for my funny voice. I've lost the bridge in my tooth, which you get knocked out at 16, taking on a bully. Okay, so I got a bridge put in there, and so that's that is the result of taking on bullies. Right, we can take these bullies on. Okay, imagine we're a school class, and there's a bully in the background. We all get together. There's one bully there. Let's take him on. Okay, so uh, we need to stop the bullying. And by the way, they don't like you calling bullies. Right. Uh, now, I'll go even further than that and say rather than bullies, they're also criminals now. Okay, you know, I've been talking to some people in the background and I must have spoken to a guy during the week there who can knock me for six. Some of the stuff he was telling me was happening in the police force at a high level and the police are now very aware of what's happening, really aware of what's happening and the control now that private corporations have over our police force. And I must have lost, during the week I was a bit, you know, when you get some bad news, you just, so you, 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 your, your kind of defences drop, you go, why am I bothering doing this? And I must say, guys, walking here today to this full room of of brilliant people, it's just, it's just uplifted me so much, it really has uplifted me. So thank you for coming along, really do appreciate that. Uh, we can win. And the reason is, numbers, guys. We are the force, we are the power. Remember the word power. And the guys from the Ashton Room have no understand the meaning of the word power. We are the power. Right? Uh, they wield it on our behalf, so we can take it back from them quite easily, uh, as it appears. Uh, so just remember, it's just numbers. We need to be waking people up. Now, can you have a, a, how many people in the room uh, in the town or village don't have a meet of free men, sovereigns, awakened people, whatever you want to call it? <coughs> be honest, put your, hands, put your hands up. Right. You've all just elected yourself to start a meet in your own towns or cities, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously guys, and I mean this, I mean this, uh, you know, that was cruel, that was cruel, that was, that was cruel. But it's true, I mean, we started off the Ashton meet, what was that, nigh on two years ago now, and there was uh, two, two, two guys, a flat cap and a whippet, literally, that's who we started off the back of the pub, right, and we've taken it forward, and I mean, the, the very knowledge of people in the Ashton room now is just stunning, I walked away, my job's done, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's astonishing. But I mean, we didn't know anything. So just because you think, oh, I'm new to this, I don't know anything. Even more reason to start this up. You don't need gurus. Don't listen to gurus, because nine, nine, ten, nine, eight times they're wrong. Nine, nine out of ten times they're wrong. Maybe not right for you. You need to work at your own life. 
So if we're all, if we, if we, for example, in the Ashton room, they've all started learning the bills of exchange. I'm working away at the moment. They've started learning the bills of exchange. And it's moving, slower, fo moving forward slowly but steadily. Nobody's rushing off ahead. And it's, 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 it's keeping people at a pace where they can all be learning together because we need to know this stuff. Bills of exchange act. Uh, so, I mean, no, nobody's walking in there saying, we, we, we presumed from the beginning nobody knows anything and started from that basis. It's that easy. So when you start these meets, you know, if somebody says, I've got all the answers, then fuck off, he doesn't, right? He doesn't have all the answers, okay? And I'll guarantee most of what he thinks is, is wrong or needs more information inputted to it. So, so we can all work together as, as teams, you know? And I mean, teams, we call ourselves the Ashton Freedom Advocates. I won't go over the, the anti-slavery talk because that's, uh, I've done it before, and I don't even bore people with that one. But if you haven't heard, if you haven't heard it, I'm more than happy to cut. This is a good talk, I think and it puts you in the right place. Uh, but uh, under the United, Na United Nations Declaration of 1998, if you, it's how you identify yourself. If you identify yourself as a human rights observer or an advocate, the state and its organs, the organs are utility companies, council, police, everybody who forms any sort of public service role, public role, right, uh, has, has to recognize excuse me, recognise you, protect you and assist you. That's if you identify yourself properly. If you don't identify yourself, I'm just some mop, as the police call us, members of the public. If you're some mop from some council estate that's turned up from the right, as soon as you say, I'm a human rights advocate, uh, suddenly things change. I mean, from my letters, I can prove that. I did one with DEFRA recently, and the first letter was like, yeah, yeah, there's the answer, and the bugger off peasant. And I wrote back and said, actually, no, I've identified myself as a human rights observer, I'm now invoking a United Nations Declaration 98. The next letter I got was like two pages. You couldn't give me enough information. <laughs> They've got rules and codes of practice to work to, guys. And they've got job descriptions. Hold them to it. Ask them. How many people in the right these, these officials ask for a copy of their job description? How many people ask for a copy of the code of conduct they've got to comply with? Do it. You're obliged to ask that information. You're run, you running your own business, your own life, right? I've got to start acting competently. And it's difficult. You know, I'm the worst one to talk, but you've got to act competently. And a competent thing to do, if somebody comes up and says, your company or your business owes me such and such, first question is, who are you? And what authority do you have? Then why are you asking me for this money? And what powers do you have to enforce this? simple questions you would ask them. So you need to be, be, what's called due diligence, you need to be doing your own due diligence. So if somebody comes up to you, giving you give, asking you to do something, you need to say, are you within your code of practice and your job description, or are you acting outside of it? Because there's different bonds there where they act with different insurance they act, these guys work to. And my, my background is as a contractor, <coughs> I knew to stay within my company, my company, company policy is important, so another thing you ask for, my company policy and my job description, because the minute I step outside that, I'm personal liable. These guys know this. We need to be holding them to that one. Hold them within their job description. Because the job descriptions are actually quite good. They hold it, they're quite tight. They hold them quite tight. So, uh, and this is everybody asking for job descriptions, asking for the codes of practice, codes of conduct, blah, 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 right? And then hold them to it. And if you don't, if you don't comply with a formal complaint, because we've got formal procedures to deal with that as well, which is in the code of practice. Anyway, so it's slightly, right. Uh, Critical Mass Radio, superb, job upon Alex and the team have done Lisa, the team's doing it, it's absolutely superb. Uh, we need to be building up the listenership because it can get quite, uh, if you, when you switch it on, you're, you're, I've brought in some really good guests and I think we'll all sympathise with this, we bring in some good guests and there's 19 people listening, right? Uh, and I don't mind making everyone full get with this and I really don't understand your real lives, you know. <coughs> but I mean, for example, last week I had Danny Masho on, uh, the MI5 whistleblower. This woman was from page headlines at one time and I think had 25 people listening. I know more people listen to the podcasts and I know we can't trust the figures, but we need, we need to be, we need to be uh, this information is out there guys, we'll, we'll bring this information to you where we can. Uh, please feast on it, it's free. Feast on the information, you know. Annie Marshall, I can get it back. If anyone's got any questions, ask me. I'll put it to Annie Marshall. And I'll bring in the show and you can ask yourself, it's your show. Uh, so I mean, f f please, 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 please get involved in this. This critical mass is a critical mass radio is a superb thing. It's, it's a tool. We all need tools in the toolbox. So I'm getting off of them. Uh, and anyone who decides to open up a toolbox and start throwing tools out, you don't need them. 
good luck to you. Uh, I mean, at least we've all been following that, but the information they're providing, at least, sorry, the information that people are providing on there is, is superb. Uh, the more credibility we get as a radio station, the better people we can bring in as guests. Yeah. So it's all down to the listenership. Now, next week I've got a, a criminal, a, a doctor, uh, David Lowe, or Lowe, Lowe uh, red haired nutter like myself, he appears. He's, he's uh, I say nutter, I mean, he's very vocal and he's about, he's, he's out there. Uh, he's very opinionated, which I like, and he teaches criminal law, anti-terrorism, and human rights. So I've got him on the show next week, so it should be lively. And then after that, the week after that, I'm going to have uh, Rowan Bosworth Davis on. Uh, still got to be confirmed, Rowan was senior uh, uh, serious fraud office investigator down in the city of London for the police. And uh, as, he, as he briefly explained, they brought down a, an investment firm of some description uh, a few of them got jailed, they appealed, and the government upheld the appeal and freed them the same day. And the word, the word came down from on high, we're never going to do this again. And in the words, we're not going to be investigating these guys again. Okay? So all of you guys think, and I, I, I have nothing against individual police officers. I mean, the police, we need the police. They do a fantastic job. I actually consider being a policeman myself. Uh, these guys do a fantastic job. It's just, it's not the, the, the guys on the ground we've got the problem with, it's the guys above them, because we don't know who they work for now. I do. <coughs> Jen, it's not advertised who they work for now, and I can assure you it's not for us. <coughs> You're all the way under the, the, the law, uh, Hallsbury's, uh, wherever you go, test cases, there's no, uh, the police have no duty of care to us. <coughs> that's, that's, that's a test case, check it for yourself. I mean, don't believe me, check it for yourself. There's no duty of care to the public. So the next question you've got to ask is who's the duty of care to? <coughs> okay. Politicians. I wrote for a job description. I do these weird things. I write letters and ask these weird questions. I wrote to House of, uh, House of Parliament a couple of years ago asking for a job description of an MP. And uh, first was party. Right? Uh, second was in the general interest of the country. Third was the... the, the so it was first, third was... Second was the general well-being the general well -being of the country. Next one was the economic well-being of the country. Fourth, the electorate. Right. We found out judges making decisions. Okay, uh, it's in the localism act, look, read your localism act. That's a good one to read. And you find that the highest priority for a judge now is the economic well-being of the country or the area. So when you're in there looking for a fair decision and looking for justice in the court, remember that judge is getting swayed. Because who decides what's the economic interest of the country? The political is the bankers. So, you know, this is a problem I've got is that uh, we don't have a functioning judicial system now. It's not fit for purpose anymore. My opinion, and I'm willing to stand by it, when I get a judge standing there telling my wife that she's not going to divulge the jurisdiction of the court, we walk out. That we're, we're, the, just, the justice system's now crashed in its arse, right? And I've no doubt there's good judges at talk, and I keep, I'm a show I say this every week, right? There's good judges at talk, and there's some excellent people at talk, very knowledgeable, very honourable, decent people at talk. Unfortunately, guys, your credibility is getting the back side ripped out of these tossers at the bottom who are playing hard and fast and actually running private businesses, pretending they're courts, mm -hmm. and you're losing us guys. The, the justice system is now losing us, losing your credibility. I'd say you've actually lost it, and I'd say it's gone as far as to say you've lost your credibility. Most of the people that come to us, and I speak to some people, some really uh, interesting people, we're all interesting people, me maybe, uh, but uh, we get some really interesting people coming in. Uh, and I, I speak to, uh, I had a phone call a couple weeks ago from a banker, I can't say too much but from a very, very senior banker. And uh, he phoned me up because he'd been victim of uh, fraud. And he went to the courts, sh closed, opened the shut case, they found that the barristers had done a deal before the hearing. And they found him guilty before the hearing. Right? Because they done a deal, because if we finish at 3 o'clock, we can go for a game of golf. OK, we won't bother to this guy. We'll just, yeah, he's guilty, blah, blah, blah. Right? Uh, fortunately, if this guy, he's got the money to buy other barristers in. So that's his third barrister team. And he's now got some of us involved. He's now instructing the barristers rather than taking a direct advice. Uh, he has now gone from being completely the other side to realising the justice system is totally screwed. It's completely, totally screwed, you know. So, uh, yeah, my opinion is, I don't worry, I'm not interested in court. It's a place of business now. If you actually go on HMCTS, the Majesty's Court's Tribunal Service, which was formed on the 1st of April 2011, from a merger of HMCS, the Court Service, the Tribunal Service, 
uh, and they merge it all together into a bastard child, right? It's a private trust. Mm -hmm. Don't believe me? Go on the, the website and download the reports yourself. Everyone I'm seeing here, I can back up this paper, right? You can download the financial report, it's called Trust Report, right? It says the partnership. It's a partnership that was created. They asked them for a copy of the partnership agreement. Oh, no, 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 that's private, you can't see that. You can have a look at our, you, you can use our, our uh, 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 framework document as, 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 as the, the partnership agreement. You're not allowed to have a copy of the official partnership agreement. Does that sound like a public body to you guys? <coughs> Is it a bugger? HMCTS, a private body run entirely for money. And the guys now can get involved in the building exchange and they were seeing what HMCT is and how the courts work, right? Uh, I won't go out and dwell, that's another talk for another day. But essentially, I like to focus on solutions. I'm not interested in that and acting. I mean, if it's a hobby of yours, guys, you know, no, no disrespect. If you're into religion or you're into anything, it's a diversion from the real problems. That, that I'm, I'm all for that, you know. It's a, feel free to use a hobby. It's a hobby, right? Uh, this saves lives and we're trying to do your solutions. There's people out there just now cutting their wrists. And I got a phone call from a woman from Manchester. That would be May last year. Never met the woman in my life. And she phoned up, she says, I've just been giving you a number. She said, I just like to thank you for what you're doing. What? <laughs> what have I done? You're thinking I'm in trouble again. She goes, no, she says, I just found my daughter hanged, hanged herself in the bathroom. Right, she's been there for three days, hung herself in the bathroom. Uh, six grand day. Six thousand pounds, 28 years old. Uh, graduated from uni, good job and all that, for poxy six grand day. She was too scared to tell, she was too embarrassed. She hung herself and her mother pulled her body down after three days hanging, you know. And as you hear stuff like that, you re it really motivates you, you know. We don't want people hanging themselves over money. You know, is that what a girl's life was worth? Six grand. Well said, well said. That's for the mother. I mean, my heart. I, I, I cried on the phone that day. Anyway, uh, right. I'll briefly talk about Bailiff Watch. Uh, <coughs> we've found everything's now privatised. I can tell you now, the entire country is now privatised. Okay. Uh, those of you listening, my, my, listen to my uh, radio show last week where I did the phone call to Tesco. Oh, uh, asking about ANPR, why Tesco's running the automatic number plate recognition and they did not want to answer that question. We need to be hitting them hard this one, guys. This is Morrison's Tesco has the why they're running the ANPR with a private company monitoring is sharing and selling information. Right? Because I mean when I was taking spoken to a girl on the phone, uh, one of the ladies on the phone uh, from, from Tesco's, uh, as soon as I mentioned, I know I'm on police watch, police watch list. Why? I'm not, I'm not a criminal. I've never had no criminal record, you know, I've, I've, I've not done nothing wrong. Because I dare to ask questions. Oh, crime, you know. I was a little bugger at the back of the class, used to annoy the teacher with questions. Remember that little bugger, he always like, miss, 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 miss. And he went to get the belt, when well, nowadays you get the belt, he used to get the belt and stuff and told you to shut up because you're asking too many questions, just dropped in the class. So I'm on the police, police watch list, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we need to be hitting these people, guys. You know, we've asked the question, we need to be at them, don't let them, don't, they, they know we're going to write one letter, two letters, and go away. Don't keep at them. They are terrified, very vulnerable that. Why is Tesco, Morrison's, as though these are different companies now, why are they running the NPR? When did they become an arm of the fucking police? Mm. Why is Tesco, the one I, I found, right? Uh, why is Tesco, it's on the pumps. Please, please excuse the delay while there's the NPR record your details. Why is Tesco now act as an arm of the police? Who appointed him for the day? Did anyone in this room vote for that? Yeah, absolutely. Did we vote for that, guys? Did anyone, I don't recall ever seeing a referendum on that one. Mm -hmm. Joe, it's okay if private companies now start buying and selling your information in public places. I don't recall when I went to, to fill up my car ever agreeing to have my private details taken by third party companies used by DVLA to check whether my car is legal and also more importantly, more worryingly, taking a photograph of me and whoever's in the car with me. Because mm. <coughs> you know, I could have my girlfriend in the car and Mrs. Make the most upset. <laughs> 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 yeah, but they, they know where I am, they know who's in the car with me, they know, you know they, 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 how much fuel I'm tanking up, you know, they know what I've just bought in the shop. I mean, this, 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 this. I mean, East Germany. You know, I, I, I was in the army, in the British army, in the Rhine, in West Germany, facing <coughs> down there. 
the, the Eastern Moors, there's no married to one of them, but uh, facing down these Eastern Reds, you know, and uh, <coughs> who'd have thought we'd be living in a country now, seriously, this isn't without our delay, living in a country now where the Stasi in Eastern Germany would be congratulating our boys, they'd be jealous of the system we've got here, seriously, it's, it's incredible, every aspect of our lives has now been tracked and, 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 and monitored, right, and I object to that, in the strongest possible terms, right, uh, it's, it's just, no, nobody's asked me for this, but nobody's asked me. And again, this is the bully thing. They're watching you. You're watching you. Your moves are watching you. And people are intimidated by this. Well, fuck you, bullies. No. So, uh, Tesco, watch out. Right. Oh, yeah, we, we're all terrorists. Everybody's a potential terrorist. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody's a terrorist. Can I also say, some of these pilot schemes that end up in the public domain are actually online, they have to be posted in the public domain. So you, you are given a chance to uh, respond to them. Yeah. yeah. But the postings are never promoted, obviously. But the radio broadcast, when I, when I spoke to the ladies on the phone, uh, yes, yeah, for parking purposes. Yeah. It's for making people don't drive away. That's what they've been told. I'm a drone, I work for a corporation. Uh, the, the, the manual says, well, it's for parking, right? But no, CCTV can cover that. Sorry, if it's a scheme that does affect the public, yeah. they are... There you go, guys, keep your eyes open for it, yeah. yeah. But, but nobody says anything about it because nobody knows the posting technique. There you go. So if you do find something like that, get out there and let us know about it. More importantly, what they're doing is testing us, because I spoke to the guy, uh, I feel sorry, from the little, the little manager in some Tesco's actually, he's a 24. And I actually feel, feel a pat on the top of his head. But uh, I remonstrated loud with this guy and he admitted there is no EMPR in that petrol station. I said, so what is this then? Is this your condition to see how many people complain before you bring it in? The testing is how many people complain. Because if you put it up and nobody complains, they will install it. Well, if you put it up and if enough people complain, they'll go, no, we're not going to install it. It's causing public disquiet. That's what they're doing, guys. And this happens all the time, right? We have to let them know. Four up Tesco's and say, I'm no longer going to be shopping at Tesco's because I have an objective for my number plates shared by third parties in DVLA and you act as an arm of the police. Okay, you're there as a supermarket, end of story. Okay, yeah, I'm going to be telling my friends about it and I'm going to be going to the website forums. And well, when it gets there, it's too late. By, by the time it gets to that point, when they're actually posting it at Tesco's because yeah. it already exists, it's too late. What I'm saying is that, that there are public. No, the test, I would say, no, too late. The testing is. But there are public notices mm -hmm. as to the testing. That's right. So, so if people see these notices, let us know. Yeah. And yeah. look at those public notices. Yeah, so do that. And disagree to them beforehand. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just drove into the petrol station, I just saw the sign, and we go, well, I didn't agree to that, you know, so. Is there a specific place where these public notices are? What I'm saying. Is where are they? In the newspaper, online. Well, that's what I'm trying to get to there, because that's not been getting said. There you go. Well, it, it's a public notice once it goes into a public forum, and they consider an online news posting yeah. as a public forum. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you have to check for those postings. Or you just don't show up in the public It's the same with chemtrails, I don't know who mentioned those before, but if they want to conduct any kind of experimentation, yeah. they, they have to post That's right. their intention yeah. in the newspaper before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, you've got so that, yeah, yeah. We have to yeah. We have to predict what's going on yeah. and look into the newspaper. Okay, cheers. Yeah, it's, that's fact, by the way. They don't have to put these notices up, but it's just we can beat it out. Just, I, 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 I've written to Tesco twice. I went to a petrol station today and I put 70 quid in it. wasn't a fucking Tesco petrol station. <coughs> you know, and every time we do it, right alerted to them. There's another 70 quid you lost. Another, oh, by the way, I was going to go for a mobile contract today. I went with such and such rather than Tesco because you guys are doing EMPR. And it's that simple, guys, you know. I mean, it's, it really is. But anyway. There's other things we can do. Anyway, we can come back to Bailiff Watch, right? I think there is easy, it's all privatisation out there. Uh, and uh, sort of looked at as where's, where's the weak link, right? And the weak link is those knuckle-dragging thugs who genuinely, I don't know, they can wake up in the morning and look at themselves in the mirror. Uh, these, these guys that call themselves bailiffs, right? And uh, they're going around and the stuff they got to, I mean, is, is, is criminal in a lot of cases. I mean, a lot of them stick to the rules. I suggest most of them don't. And we've seen some videos online, some fairly harrowing videos online. I've just seen a, a video showing me there that's not been online yet. 
and it's, it's disgusting. This should not be happening in a free democracy. This should not be happening in a place where we've got free people. Right? That belongs in, if you want to do it in, in, in Moscow, not even Moscow, you can get away with that now. But uh, if you want to go in China and beat people up, feel free. Right? This is, this is Britain. This is the country that brought out the first anti-slavery acts. This is the country that st stopped other countries doing this today, guys. We fought two world wars to stop this crap happening in other countries. We're allowed it to happen in this country. It's just appalling. I read the book uh, a couple of months back and I've told all the guys in the Ashton Room to read this. And I found this old book in archive.org. You know, you flip through books looking for info. This is one I stopped and read it cover to cover. And it's called uh, Wapen Tack 100 of World. And the Wapen Tack, I won't go into the old details, but it's the old court system before the new district councils took over and the magistrates courts and the county courts took over and essentially you could buy the rights to run a hundred and a hundred was an area where if you could you could raise a hundred men with swords or guns to defend that on behalf of the king he would grant you a franchise remember that word he would grant you a franchise and you then could run the court and you collect taxes give the lion's share you've already heard that phrase the lion's share that's the king's share of all the taxes you all the revenue you raise in these courts and uh, then he'd be coined in. These guys were abusing it, something <coughs> terrible. And you read this book and you're, one minute you're laughing, next minute you're sitting there going, oh my God, you did that, you know. Uh, What's the name of the book again? Uh, if you contact any guys in the Ashton Room, it's on archive.org. If, yeah. if you type in Wirral, look for Wapping Tack or Wirral or 100 of Wirral, you'll find it on archive.org. But contact any guys in the Ashton Room, it's a good book, Chris. And the reason I like this book, right, is because you realise nothing now has changed. All that happened was in about 18, <coughs> 18, 1830s and 1860s, 1870s, uh, the city of London looked at all these guys running these very lucrative little scams around the country and went, I want some of that. So they took over. So nothing's changed. There's a, a different badge in the door, a different bunch of shanks inside it, bullying us. Right? Nothing's changed. They make up the laws as they go along, and it's all about that. That's all, it's about job creation, self-preservation, self-worth, self-value, <coughs> money, profit. Last thing on the list is us and justice. We're there just to serve them. Apparently we're their servants. So uh, anyway, we, a few of us got together after watching uh, uh, the video of uh, the people versus the banks. Uh, uh, very good one. And... Uh, I showed you that the, one of our guys in Liverpool actually stand up to some bailiffs. They screwed them down. The police that day did their job impeccably. Impeccably. <laughs> and as a result, the bailiffs were minuted. Uh, the bailiff uh, on camera uh, was abusive. He was badly, poorly dressed. He was insulting. He swore. He, uh, off camera, he threatened to set fire to the guy. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, there's, there's, there's other stuff, right? Uh, if you see these videos, the things these bailiffs are doing is just appalling. I saw a video there of the bailiff actually arrest, rest, wrestling someone to the ground very viciously uh, and then smashing his camera. Right? Who do these bailiffs think they are? Seriously, who do they think they are? You want to talk about bullies? Who do these people think they are? They can go in there pushing people around, punching women. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just appalling. Now, I've, no, I've no doubt the bailiffs do. Uh, the, 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 the lawful side of their job, they're very strictly controlled by regulations, by the codes of practice, job descriptions, uh, 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 case law, etc. Uh, but what they're doing is they are playing hard and fast because you have to see the paperwork, and the paperwork crap. It's not signed. Yeah, there's people there. <coughs> and what they do is they go for single mothers. I actually got this from a bailiff. Single mothers are easy target. They go for single mothers, easy target. You go in there and go, oh, what do I pay? What do I pay? What do I pay? So she takes the, 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 the dummy tip of the baby's mouth, sells it to pay the bailiffs. I mean, this is literally what's happening, you know. They feed the baby and they're paying these bullies. Uh, so they tend to go for the very easy target. It's an object to that. I really strongly object to that, you know. So uh, what the idea of bailiff watch was, I looked at Cop Watch in America. For those of you who haven't been on YouTube, look at Cop Watch. Uh, for example, Philadelphia uh, set up a Cop Watch scheme. I won't talk too long about this, but... They essentially, every time the police were called out to a case, because the police in Philadelphia at one point, four or five years ago, were out of control. Absolutely out of control. These guys thought they were the good law, they were the law, you know. And people were getting killed. Uh, <laughs> so the police get called out, two people, minimum, turn up, high vise, caught watching the back of it, camera and stand at a distance, and just video it. Yeah? Uh, 
if the police stepped out of line, form well, a complaint was sent through, if a policeman was assaulted, you'd give the police the videos as evidence you to help them. So you're there as, 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 as a, an impartial observer. Uh, so the idea is that we attend, start attending all these bailiffs, uh, bailiff events, let's call them. Uh, we video them. We get video evidence of them, right? Uh, we don't get involved initially. We don't get involved. We stand back as impartial observers, right? Uh, using the United Nations Declaration of 98, we step in as human rights observers and as citizen uh, citizen observers. Because they remember that Cameron's big society wants everyone down at the local level, everything involved at the local level. Well, let's get involved. Let's get fucking involved, okay? This stops, okay? Uh, so we are going to be recruiting initially uh, local coordinators. Now, all the local coordinators is somebody, each area we're running its own little focus, right? Because it's been stupid to have it from some central command. We don't run that way. But, I mean, if we're trying to end up a nightmare, the local people know their own who's <coughs> working on Monday, who's working on Tuesday, who's available on a Wednesday afternoon, and old Joe, he's, he's a bit limpy, so he needs a young lad to help him along. And, so stuff needs, needs, needs sorted at the local level because of limitations. Uh, uh, high buys will be issued, ID cards, all that kind of good stuff, no business cards. Uh, when you turn up at the event, you introduce yourself to the police politely. I am bailiff watch, up to the bailiff. Uh, try and politely hand them it if you want uh, to introduce yourself. That way there's no, no confusion about who and what you are. Uh, we will be writing to the chiefs of police, uh, police commissioners, MPs, High sheriffs, under sheriffs, everybody in advance let them know we're here, we're in the area. You better tell your guys to calm the fuck down because we're going to be losing their jobs if they don't. We're going to make criminal complaints where we see crime. We will be making a criminal complaint where we see a breach of a, a breach of a code of practice. We will be, make, we will be making a formal complaint. Okay? Uh, so either way, we want to get rid of the bad bailiffs. Because what Cop Watch taught us in Philadelphia was there's a lot of good policemen. Right? And they've got no power to get rid of the bad guys. And they hate the bad guys as much as we do. So the Philadelphia guys was over one at a time they got rid of the bad policemen, dunk, 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 until predominantly it was all good policemen left. And that's just shaking the cop watch the guys' hands. It's made their job easier. Why? Because it's reported, check the figures yourself, the crime dropped 40% by getting rid of the bad police. <coughs> now granted, it's a different country, it's a different regime, you know, I'm not saying it's not blaming the police here, but I'm just saying once you start watching these public officials, and holding within the codes of practice, not a good shit, right? We nail them, because that's their job. They step outside it, by fuck, you better be sure you're coming for you, okay? So this is this is what Bailiff Watch is about. Now, we're looking for reliable volunteers, uh, local coordinators. Uh, essentially, there'll be a, there's one central number, the website, that was all going to set up now, one central number, people call, uh, and they phone and say, I've got the bailiffs at the door. Now hopefully, with us invoking United Nations agenda, uh, United Nations declaration of 98, that we can uh, get the MPs and the bailiffs and high sheriffs and under sheriffs, etc, etc, advising in advance when these bailiff actions are happening. Because if not advising the bailiff actions in advance, why would they hide that information from us? These are perfectly lawful, legal uh, uh, bailiff actions with nothing to hide. Why would you not give us that information where they are? Because we're just Human rights observers, guys, that's all we are, and that's uh, essentially that's all we are, uh, unless you're planning to breach human rights. So uh, either we will be told in advance, or people will phone us up on our uh, emergency call line. We will then send a group text to everybody in that area, and the local teams will organise amongst themselves who can make it along. Minimum of two, not one, minimum of two people there at any one time, and we video it, the whole thing, right? And then what we do is we'll have central teams who are. Uh, <coughs> who have been in training courses to understand what the bailiff's jobs are and what the, uh, the, the codes of practice and case law and all that. And every time the, the central team review a video and see a contravention, there's a standard complaint letter that's sent out. Uh, anyway, so there's, uh, and it will affect them by the way. It doesn't look good in your, uh, your, 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 your promotion report when you've got 17 complaints against you, does it? So uh, at the very least, if, as soon as they step over the line into criminality, we make a formal complaint then, and we publish this stuff publicly. Okay, these are public officers, apparently. Let's make them fucking public officers. Okay. I know I'm going to be targeted for this, and I really don't give a shit. You guys want to come for me, come for me, because I'm not going away. Really don't give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> 
I don't, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm not going away. I mean, if Annie Marshall last week said she left the country because she was scared and blah, blah, she moved to a better country, and I say to him, staying out, this is my country, I'm not leaving. Mm. Why should I leave? Should I be bullied into leaving my own yeah. country? Mm. Anyway, so. Uh, so that's Bailiff Watch. So Bailiff Watch is uh, kicking off. I, I was hoping it'll be kicked off by now, but there's, there's, there's uh, uh, stuff happening behind the scenes. So we're just looking for more for more coordinators. So if you're interested in Bailiff Watch, introduce yourself to me or Laws or any one of the Bailiff Watch guys on Skype and uh, or contact me uh, any other way. I'll, I'll put you forward as a, as a coordinator. But I mean, this isn't going to be like, you know, you're doing this 24-7 sort of thing. It just means you get a phone <coughs> and you're able to answer the phone. And, and, and contact your local guys. So it can be, it, it can be somebody who's retired. You know, you don't necessarily have to go to these actions. Just somebody who's retired who can say, oh yeah, she wants Tuesday, he wants Monday, and one thing or another. Uh, we do not get involved. Level-headed people only, no hot heads. Okay, because uh, all it takes is one person to do some stupid, and it can damage your reputation and the rest of it. You know, so no hot heads. Okay, so that's that's being the watch. Uh, watch your space now, and we'll be kicking off fairly shortly. One by we'll be handing out a booklet that's getting drafted at the moment. There's a booklet that's going to be everything you need to know with you with bailiffs, okay, for the public. Because if somebody's been a bad boy and they deserve to lose their stuff, fine. You know, there's some absolute assholes that there deserve it, let's be honest, right? But there's some innocent wee women that she's been targeted because she's a single mother. As I've mentioned, some people in the room uh, become very easy targets for them, you know. Uh, they need to know what their rights are. How many of us were taught our rights at school? You know, none of us. Okay, that's how we do it. So a simple booklet, big letters, pictures. You know, worded through syllables or less, uh, so anyone can sort of understand it. Uh, it's not been degrading to anyone. It's literally because it's. I mean, if you want to go deeper, you can go deeper. But this is what you need to know. And there'll also be stickers, BW stickers, right? Uh, that people can stick on their cars, and stick in front windows. Three so guys come along, look at your house, and go shit. Give this little bit to the risk factor to them because it's a financial risk. It's a commercial decision to make. Who are we going to go for? We're going to go for the ex army boy up there who we know is going to be throwing things at us. Or we're going to go for that wee scared woman down there with four kids, single mother with four kids. We've got to raise the risk factor. So if they know, they see that VW, or she's on the phone now. She's going to be here. Okay. So, anyway, so that's the idea of the bailiff watch. Next stage will be we do actual groups uh, uh, for advice over advi advisory phone lines. So people can phone a passing for advice. Uh, I really don't want to go down that route myself personally, but uh, we go down there uh, and give people advice. We uh, can actually intervene where it becomes uh, repo jobs and the heavy shit. We can actually send our own teams down there to get involved in the repo and actually stand by the people who's getting repoed or whatever the action is to uh, 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 give them advice. But that's going to require you to be trained up. Okay, so that's, that's obviously we're asking for a, a lot more commitment there. I mean, when you see the vids of get on the net of guys actually stand up to these bailiffs and, 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 and winning the day, it's, it is inspiring. It really is inspiring. We just need to let, increase our, our knowledge levels. So that's, that's the What I don't want is talking shops. Right? It's far too much talking out there. Uh, we need more boots on the ground. So it's basically getting people away from the uh, the forums, who are, like bitching about each other and gossiping and all that good crap, you know actually get the boots on the ground and get them doing something and give people a taste because a lot of people are just scared to get involved they're just scared to get involved you know so bailiff watch is pretty good there's other stuff when they come behind it uh the bailiff watch is a pretty good start because people can stand there empowered because you're presenting something card you're a human rights observer you get a team behind you and uh you're actually doing something good and i can guarantee you the first time you've done that you you, you it'll change your life if you haven't done this stuff before, it will change your life, okay? Uh, and I know a lot of new people are scared of this stuff, you know, I, I, it's understandable. Just a sort of gentle start to it. Uh, right, now, the main talk about uh, the, the Bail of Watch website will be up shortly. It's been designed now, so it'll be up shortly, okay? So we're open to all suggestions, all ideas. This is our Bail of Watch. It doesn't belong to me or anyone else. It's our Bail of Watch, right? So there's people out there are getting turfed at the houses that are getting their front doors kicked in by police who think they're fucking bailiffs now, right? Well, they are. Uh, but uh, anyway, so we, 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 the police have told their bosses to do stuff that's uncomfortable for them, but they're doing it because nobody's saying they can't do it. But they turn and say, well, I didn't do it because somebody is filming over there with a camera. Uh, it gives the police the power to say no. 
it seems the cop watch guys. Okay. So anyway. Right. The main focus of what I'm on now, my love I'm talking for. Right, the main talk I wanted to do today was Agenda 21. You've all heard of Agenda 21. I like honesty. How many people have never heard of Agenda 21? Excellent. Okay. Right. I focus on solutions. A boss I worked four years ago told me, I used to go up to him and say, I've got a problem, I've got a problem, I've got a problem. He, said, he turned around and says, listen, he says, I pay you for solutions, not problems. Right, I'm the boss, I don't want to deal with problems, I want to deal with solutions. So in the future, when you bring a problem to me, I want two solutions to choose from. Right, we have to start thinking that way, right? And that, 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 I use that all the time now, right? So whenever I hear somebody going, oh, yeah, there's a problem here, I'll say, okay, I want two solutions from it, and I'll look for two solutions for it, right? So I'm trying to focus solutions, but the problem is Agenda 21, and the more you dig in, you really, really need to look into this shit, right? Really need to look into it, and I would, I would urge, Drop what you're doing and really get into this because everything is happening. We think strange and and criminal and evil and all that. We track it all back to Agenda 21, right? Agenda 21 isn't some sort of James Bond bad guys, but I know it sounds like it. It's not some James Bond bad guy stroking his white cat. And, uh, Agenda 21 is actually United Nations uh, uh, agenda. It was an agreement uh, from the real summit. We'll talk about it in a minute. As a, in the real summit, but uh, once you understand Agenda 21, you understand what the real problem is. Way above TVLA, way above your council, way above all this crap, it's Agenda 21. Now, I've got one solution, one solution, I've got another couple I'm working on, and welcome, I welcome any more solutions to deal with us, right? That's a good one, you can all have fun with us. Even the new guys can have major fun with us, okay? So, uh, uh, never introduce myself, sorry, my name's Rob B. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, we are the Ashton Freedom Advocates, some people in the room. It's just immediately people in the room know me already. And uh, our, our meetup.com website is freedom northwest. Don't go to freedom northwest, you end up sometimes American nutters, right? It's freedom northwest.com. Okay. And uh, essentially, it is the calendar for our, our events and file section. If you want to use a forum, it's there to use it. You know, it's, it's okay. But uh, essentially, it's the main thing I use it for is the calendar. So if you get any local events kicking off, it doesn't matter where they are in the country, if you get any events you want a bit of publicity for, get them on that calendar, because rather than not knowing where to look for stuff, if you get them on one calendar, nobody makes any money from this, you know. If you get them on calendar, it's one place to look at, see what's happening. I'm free and wet on Saturday. What's happening Saturday? Oh, there's that, 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 that. It'd be great if we had that calendar, wouldn't it? That was the idea of us. Anyway, so, uh, where are you next? Right, I'm a radio show the Phase 21 uh, on criticalmassradio.co.uk, criticalmassradio.co.uk, listen to it, uh, <laughs> brilliant people in there. Uh, phase 21 is uh, something I've dreamed up, dreamed up and it's called Fellows for the Abolition of Corporate Enslavement in the 21st Century. Very briefly, what that is, is uh, emulating the slavery abolitionists from the 1800s, okay? They brought the government to an absolute grinding halt, right? Because uh, people cared about slavery back then, okay? And the reason I put 21st century in is to counter Agenda 21. The sustainable <coughs> agenda for sustainable development in the 21st century, the United Nations stuff. Oh, fuck it. I'll use 21st as well then. Okay, so I'm on between 5, 3, and 8, uh, 8 to 10. Next. Uh, agenda 21 policies are voluntary. You're not obliged to contribute to them. Nothing more need, need added. They are voluntary. It's, you can read it, it says it's, it's voluntary on the nation states. And then therefore, the nation states is voluntary on the organs of the state, the councils and the police and whatever, you know, these, these utility companies, is voluntary on them. So the question I've been asking for a few months is, what point has become bloody obligatory on me? Right? And the fact is, it's not. Okay, next. Uh, there you go. Beautiful, looks good. It's good, 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 good advertising. It's all very cosy and warm, isn't it? They to save the world and, and hug families and Butterflies dancing over little children and, and giving you know, that's good stuff, you know. So this is the kind of level we're dealing with. This is pure marketing crap, okay? Looks like Saturn to me. It's all different logos they use, and you know the competition so you can bullshit with people with fancy logos every year. But uh, it's all painted as very sort of dynamic and solving problems. Next one. Right. 
Rumbai in 18 Asians. Okay. Right. Uh, Telegraph, of July 2009. Just as our banking sector is struggling with its debts, uh, this was Prince Charles, by the way. Uh, so nature's life support systems are failing to cope with the debts we built up there too, he said. It said. There's a lizard apart like some people. And if we don't face up to this, then nature, the biggest bank of all, could go bust. And no amount of quantities e easing will revive it. I mean, you have to <laughs> the, the prince called for a rethinking of society's perfect perception of the world. If only because surely we all want to bequeath to our children and our grandchildren something other than the living hell of the nightmare that for so many of us now looms in the horizon. He said, it said, Lizard said, referring to an earlier speech in March when he said there were less than 100 months to act to save the planet from reversible damage due to climate change. He said there are now only, only, that's my garden reprint, uh, 96 months left. Now, do you notice the clues here? Children, grandchildren, living hell, nightmare, mm -hmm. horizon. These are all buzzwords. You have to learn your advertising, marketing mm -hmm. crap, right? This is all buzzwords. Now, your average person out there uh, who doesn't understand this, oh, that's terrible, they're out to kill the children. You find a lot of these outfits, common purpose and one of them hide behind puppies and children and disabled kids, right? Mm -hmm. They do hide behind these outfits, hide behind charities. Right? So the minute you, you go, oh yeah, that's wrong, yeah, but it's the children. They do it all for the children. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, is yeah, that thingies that? You, you, is it, it was the thingies with the hands? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There is when he's nice, I believe it's Knights of Malta. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. This is the prince that's really caring about the world. Okay, next. Can I also say that both of those statements are uh, appeal to authority and appeal to emotion? They're both uh, yeah. fallacies, the logical fallacies. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's just very clever. It's very clever. Mm -hmm. done. Yeah, there's different layers to these things. You know, we'll see a deeper layer. You know, I was Joe reading this. Uh, what is Agenda 21? The Social Summit uh, really brought this out. It produced a declaration and a programme of action for social development which stresses the need for full participation of all people in decision making for their future. For us, apparently. Hey, democracy. <laughs> apparently. Ah, and which contains a series of ten commitments agreed by governments. Also, it's not democratic, then. <laughs> exactly. These are an enabling environment for social development. Can anyone in this room actually define to me what social development means? Right, it's whatever the politicals decide it is. So first one, politicians decide what that is. The goal of eradicating poverty. Okay, fair enough. The goal of full employment. Okay, set your targets for high, okay. The promotion of social integration. Remember this is for the world, by the way, right? The promotion of social integration. Oh, that's Marx about social integration. That seems a bit, mm. a bit dangerous as well. So the the of every one of those statements. Logically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely, you can take the pieces. But this is, this is what they're, they're throwing at us. This is the great corporate crap they're chucking in here, right? Uh, promotion of social integration, equality of men and women. I disagree with women are more equal than women, but basically you beat me up, so I'm back down here. Uh, education, that word education. Oh my uh, Send you to prison to get re-educated. Mm -hmm. right. Speeding up, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not into this conspiracy stuff. This is, it's, it's, I'm showing you the fact here. Speeding up the development, this comes from the website by the way. Speeding up the development of the least developed countries. Great. Ensuring that structural adjustment programs include social goals. Mm -hmm. Structural adjustment programs. A better resourcing for social development. A better, better framework for international cooperation for social development. So what is social development getting involved in here, right? And I haven't put it on here, but the guys from the Ashton Room, I did the talk in Human Rights, and I showed them the, uh, the, the uh, I forget what it's called now, the protocol for the Soviet, Soviet system, 1952, it's after, it's after uh, Stalin had died, right? And all the commies got together, the little reds got together, and went, oh, okay, we need, we need to make rules to make sure it never happens again. So they drew up like a, a manifesto. Uh, for, it's basically their, their Bill of Rights in the Soviet Union. And uh, it's full of this great crap as well. Okay. Now, some you didn't know was the Soviet Union used a, a phrase, it's, uh, from understanding, it's been directly taken, used by Agenda 21, as well used by United Nations, sustainable development. 
and you get these kids get school and our little nieces are getting just fed this crap as well, you know. Sustainable development and you know, this mantra of sustainable development, these little wide eyed alarmists run away with sustainable development, you know. <coughs> Until you ask him, what does that mean? Because the Soviet Union used that to murder forty million people. Don't forget that. So sustainable development is a political phrase. What is who decides what social, who, who decides what sustainable development is? Who decides what the, the who decides what targets are? We don't. Okay? So beware that a social sustainable development was used by the Soviet Union. Next time you get people talk about sustainable development. Next one. Uh, I won't I won't read it all, we'll try to keep it short, but uh, it was a, it was agreed in uh, Rio uh, so there you go. Agenda twenty one is a blueprint for sustainable development in the twenty first century. There you go. As basis was agreed during the Earth Summit at Rio, not the Earth Summit, I mean, it'll cozy again, you know, at Rio. Do you have any, do you guys watch uh, uh, George Carlin? Yeah. 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 Have you ever seen that vid where he says we're damaging the Earth? He goes, the Earth's going to be, we, we are doing nothing. We are doing nothing to the Earth. The Earth just shake us off and fleas whenever it feels like it. And he nails it. He absolutely nails it. You know. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And uh, you know, it's, uh, it's for us to think that we can, we're going to go and solve their problem. How arrogant is that? Certainly. That we can get there and fix their problem. One volcano knocks a whole theory dead. Anyway, so uh, it's based this was agreed during the Earth Summit at Rio in 1992 and signed by the, he the heads of 179 states and governments. So. Was any of us, this is a huge thing, but none of us were ever consulted in this. Mm -hmm. They went away and went, you will sign that. Okay. So, uh, anyway, so again, where's the, where's the democracy or where's the effort? This is a huge impact on our lives, by the way. Not one person has asked about it. Uh, at Rio, an understanding, this is what I'm going to do, start off big and then we'll go down to a local level. At Rio, an understanding was given that the local councils would produce their own plan a local agenda 21. Ooh. This would involve consulting with the community because as the people in the area who have the knowledge needed to make sensible decisions for the future. That sounds fantastic. Have any of you guys ever been consulted with us? No. Okay. Agenda 21 is a guide for individuals, businesses and governments in making choices for development and help society and the environment. You bring the environment and cozy puppies and dying penguins and polar bears and stuff like that. If we do not tackle the issues it concerns, we will face higher and higher levels of human suffering and damaging to the, damage to the world we live in. So basically, do this or you're going to destroy the world and all the children are going to die and you're going to feel guilty. See, they see what they're doing there. It's very clever. Know how it goes further just looking at the environment. Oh, now we're talking. Social factors are seen as very important as well. So they've gone away from just being an environmental concern now to involve in sustainable development and social factors. Agenda 21 is a huge document with 40 chapters and four sections. It's not. It deals with, easy to read. It deals with social, and this is where it gets interesting. It deals with social and economic dimensions. Mm -hmm. This straight out of the United Nations website. Developing countries, poverty, consumption patterns, population, health, Human settlements, integrating environment and development. What the hell has that got to do with them? You know, Soviets used to do this crap. Remember the five-year plans? Uh, and they fucked up everyone. Look at the Chinese; they screwed up everyone. Conservation, and, and they, they totally went. They went uh, 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 capitalist. That worked out quite well for China. Conservation and management of resources, atmosphere, lands, forests, deserts, mountains, agriculture, biodiversity. Biotechnology, oceans, fresh water, toxic chemicals, hazards, radioactive, and solid waste and sewage. Is there any part of our lives you haven't touched with that? So basically, we're in charge of everything now. Yeah. Conservation and management of resources. Who's deciding who's managing and who's who's getting managed on behalf of? Okay, I'll argue it's private companies. Strengthening the role of major groups, women, children, and youth, indigenous peoples, non-government organisations, local authorities. Workers, business and industry, farmers, scientists and technologists. All sounds great. Who decides who get who decides that though? Again, politicals. Okay. I've, I've, I've said no problem with this, I've no problem if it's done fairly. We all agree, but nobody's done agreed with 
political groups have gone away and decided themselves, we're going to give more power to, to the workers, because fuck the bankers, or we're going to give more power to the bankers, because fuck the workers. We, we are not having a say in this matter. They've got a huge tool in the hand into hand their hands of psychopaths to wield as they want, with the authority to wield it as they want. Okay? Main means of implementation, finance technology, this is the good one. Means of how they can implement it, finance. So now Agenda 21's getting involved in finance. Do you know you starting to see what's happening with the financial markets out there, by the way? Technology transfer. So all that technology we are, we are, we are, we are creating in this country from the universities, we are funding, you know, kind of something that gets transferred all over for, for anyone willing really to take it. Using, you know. But I mean, technology transfer is great. If it actually happened, is it happening? Or is private companies jealously guarding the technology? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the technology transfer is not happening. What's happened is it's going from the public into the private and staying there. They're making all the money from it. Right? That's Monsanto about technology transfer. Science. Mm -hmm. They decide what science is now, you'll find it in a minute. Uh, science is not what we learned, it's what I've learned in reading books and numbers and stuff. No, no. Political. Education, that word again, capacity building. The hell is that? International institutions, oh. <laughs> legal measures, information. Okay, next. So, uh, on the other hand, I like to, when I bring something to you, I like to bring the alternatives. So, you know, I'm, I'm like the BBC, well, not so much like the BBC, but I like to bring alternatives. As an anti UN agenda, 20, uh, 21 activist Rosa Choir says, is the blueprint, is the action plan to inventory and control all land, all water, all plants, all minerals, all construction, all animals, all means of production, all energy, all information, and all the human beings in the world. It is a completely, completely comprehensive plan. It's global and it's implemented locally. It's in every single town all across the world. So if anyone thinks this doesn't affect you directly and hit you hard, you're, you're mistaken, it does actually, right? What you don't mention is who's funding this, right? Yeah. And there's some serious. I urge you to look at who's funding this. It gets very interesting. The big, the big outfits that are funding this stuff, right? Why would they be funding this? Unless it's got a profit. Okay, power and profit. Next. Uh, it's run by the United Nations via a non-governmental organisation. Well, I don't like the idea of that. I mean, there's no, 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 no democracy there. There's no, no non-governmental, no democracy. Called International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives, commonly known as uh, Local Governments for Sustainability. Yeah. yeah, Local Governments for Sustainability. All oh, sounds great. This, right, to start digging. This is pretty. Start asking questions as well. Another one. This is paid for you by you, the taxpayer. I've not written this. This is you know, the website. This is paid by you, the webpayer, the, the, the taxpayer, without your consent, because you've not, not had a vote on its implementation. UN Agenda 21 is behind the building programmes you don't want in your area. It is behind mass immigration, which my research tells me is designed to wreck nations and their identities. Okay, and I, mean, I know it's got something, but in my opinion, after considerable research, Agenda 21 is behind the large portion of unemployment, is behind your ever increasing energy bills, the surveillance in your street, the breakdown of law and order, so nations are increasingly wrong without rights, such as habeas corpus. Now, what I see from this, I mean, no, we're saying this now, there's, there's no UK anymore, it's all about EU, and they're, they're taking away our, 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 our British nationality, and they're taking away our British pride, and we're ashamed of being English now. God, you say you're proud of English anymore. This is all, this is all deliberate, guys, because what they want to do is they want to remove us from our tribal groups, and bring us into the corporation to blindly follow the great team. So they've got to do, first of all, dismantle everything that we hold dear to us, and replace it with their corporate agenda. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I'm not, I'm not being political here at all, guys. We're not being political, but they are doing it. They are dismantling us. They don't want us in pubs, to having a fag and having a beer and chatting with politics. They'd rather shut the pubs down if they're sitting at home, watching TV. Yeah, this I mean, this whole and, I mean, you can talk to anyone with children who go to school. Ask your kids what you talk today in school. They're getting pumped full of this stuff. And ask them, ask, ask, any, ask anyone under 21 what Magna Carta is. Uh, so, I won't go into that one, next one. Uh, do you want to play that clip by Moncton? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not politicalist, I'm a, I'm a politicalist, I think politics is completely broken. 
They are not political at all. If the Copenhagen yeah. summit taught us anything, is that the world is still very much divided about climate change. Lord Christopher Monckton is regarded as one of the world's leading sceptics on the issue. He's here in Australia in the studio. And to debate him, climate scientist Dr Ben McNeil from the University of New South Wales. Good morning to you both. Morning. Thanks, Lord Monckton. You've asked me to call you Christopher. Yeah. Um, why have scientists like Ben got climate change so wrong? I think what has happened is that they have exaggerated the small grain of truth that underlies it. Yes, if you add greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, you will get warming, but you won't get very much. OK. Um, ben, is that a possibility, that, that the greenhouse gases are being overstated, that, that the impact on climate is being overstated, that this is just simply a natural event we're going through? Look, we've had 150 years of understanding of what is driving our climate and what greenhouse gases are. Just like we have, we know that UV is reflected by the sunscreen properties, we know greenhouse gases trap heat. Now, it is, it is very true that we have a range of different warming trajectories we're going on. It could be two degree warming by the end of the century, up to seven degrees warming. But that's entirely dependent on how much greenhouse gas that we emit in the future. The science in terms of climate change is well and truly over in terms of the fundamentals. Mm. We can debate the politics, we can debate uh, what we do, but in terms of the fundamental understanding, it's, it's like trying to really debating the, the laws of physics. It, it, it's not debatable, unfortunately. The politics is, and I'm sure Lord Moncton will, will, will um, enlighten us on the politics, he's a, he's a politician, but in terms of the science, um, it, it is fundamentally uh, sound. Well, it's been right because the, the vast majority of scientists, credible scientists in the world, do back climate change. Do you have any evidence is for that? It, well, the IPCC report is, is one of the all peer-reviewed 4,000 scientists. All right, let's take the peer review process then. Um, Just recently it was exposed that they had decided that the Himalayan glaciers were going to melt by 2035. Settled science, IPCC, we've known it for 150 years, and now they've admitted what they really meant was 2350. And the peer reviewers told them they'd got it wrong, but the authors overruled the peer reviewers. Now, when I write a peer-reviewed paper in a scientific journal, if the reviewer says, we want you to explain this equation or expand that or say okay. the other, you have to change it. In the IPCC, the authors prevail. There is no proper peer review yep. process. Uh, ben, the sceptics have pointed out a lot of these holes in the report. Does that discredit the whole report? It, you have thousands and thousands of, of different published peer-reviewed um, uh, evidence and science to go by in these reports. Now, if I was a reasonable person, I can easily accept the 999 observations that are out there. For example, that the Arctic sea ice has actually rapidly declined, worst case scenario, beyond what we thought in terms of our models. But in terms of the melting of these glaciers, that's true. We're always saying, well, there's, there's still melt in terms of glaciers. But in terms of this particular issue, okay, maybe not 2035, but it may be, it's still melting at an, at an unprecedented rate. And that one evidence, what about sea level rise? What about droughts? What about bushfire risk? What about the temperature record? Yeah. I mean, this is, this, what, we're, what we're seeing here is, a tri is, a, is a, 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 an attempt by many people in society who don't like what the science is saying. And, and, that's, and I, I understand that, absolutely. But to try and point to cherry-picking information here and there over the insurmountable, amazing amount of um, evidence that is out there from Australian scientists. We have CSIRO climate scientists, Bureau of Met Meteorology climate scientists, to somehow discredit what we do as our, in our lives, in our professional lives, is outrageous. With all respect, you are not an expert on the central question in this debate, which is climate sensitivity. How much warming will you mm. get if you add CO2 to the atmosphere? And sorry, now, you, are, you are a climate uh, and, scientist? And, and what, you I, what I'm going to do is to give you some results in the peer-reviewed literature. Yes, one of them was written by me, but we're not going to mention that. We're going to mention other people, eminent scientists, not laymen like me. Let's take Professor Richard Lindzen, for instance, who has produced paper after paper showing that climate sensitivity is around a quarter to a seventh of what the UN says it is. Mm -hmm. That means you get a quarter to the seventh of the warming okay. that the UN says. Uh, Douglas and Knox, series of papers from 2004 to 2009 saying the same. Numerous papers now saying this, and why?
because if you look at the only period of sustained warming over which we could have had any influence, and that's between roughly 1983 and 2001, all previous periods of warming we couldn't have had any influence on any analysis. In that period, the radiative forcing, the change in temperature forced yeah. by something happening, was naturally occurring cloud cover change of 3 watts per square meter, all anthropogenic okay. forcings estimated by the IPCC 0.8, five times as much forcing from right, natural causes as from CO2. From that you can calculate that the effect of CO2 on temperature is once again one sixth to one seventh okay. of what the UN says we have this That debate. is an observed result. We had this debate and, 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 and there are a lot of other scientists who totally disagree with that. But I suppose my point is, if you're wrong, yeah. We go to hell and back. Right. If, if, hang on. If Ben's wrong, mm. well then, what have we done? We better managed our resources. What ah, have we lost? Just a moment. What we've lost is lives and in the millions. Here's what Herr Ziegler, the UN. This one right February 2013. Uh, Lord Christopher Monckton, who's uh, very much against the United Nations Agenda 21, because he sees as for the conspiracy ones the New World Order. It's not conspiracy anymore. They're actually using this terminology in a higher level, right? Mm. But uh, you start to speak to guys in the street. I, I try to avoid losing my credibility with all that I've got. Uh, so avoid using stuff like your old order because you're always Joe Blogs. As soon as you mention your old order, he runs for a mile, yeah. But uh, Lord Blood Monkton talks about it's, it's a new global dynamic with the big corporations and they're working together to, 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 to carve up the world between themselves, okay? Uh, they, they control the world. And what happens is, 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 is an activist comes on, we well, calls him alarmist. And this guy's quoting all the stat, all the, the facts and figures and all that good stuff. Extremes. We know the truth always lies in the middle somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely, mate. There's two extremes, and we know the truth lies somewhere in the middle. So for us to define the truth is not these guys. Are absolutely correct. <coughs> I, I mean, I, you know, whatever he says here, yeah, I like to check the fair facts myself. And I've bought some books in UN Agenda 21, and I've surveyed some of the data. It's amazing how much these climate alarmists uh, will adapt the data because the best way to get us to conform is to frighten us. That's what governments do. I should have the book away back here. Yeah. So it was a yeah, documentary. The world is nice. Yeah, yeah. Is that, I watched one. It was a. Uh, was that a BBC? I should ran it five, six years ago. It was really, uh, the, the 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 nightmare of politics, or something was called. Anyway, uh, and they were they, they actually got the government now no longer can govern because private corporations are doing the government. So what does government do now? All they do now is protect us. That's the only job. So <laughs> who are they going to protect us from? <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll invent things. So there's measles epidemics now. Oh, My yeah. God, I remember when I was a kid, measles. You have to get a party, put the kids together in one room. Yeah. Remember the measles parties? Yeah. Now it's like, oh my God, run for the hills, there's measles in the country, you know. <laughs> See, yeah. Apparently somebody's died. Oh. Apparently. Apparently. Right, okay. Apparently. Well, but I mean, you know, they've got to invent terrorist looking as terrorists under your bed. You know, I, I get a bed and I'm looking underneath it. Is there a terrorist under there? It's, just, it's getting to a stage, you know, and there's video cameras because everybody's a potential terrorist. Because that's the only job we've got now, is to protect us. Right? And it's actually in the United Nations, the Human Rights, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and the subsequent covenants, their job is to protect us. So that they're making, they're making uh, a hay with that one, right? Uh, so they're inventing stuff now to protect us from. And they're going to protect us from ourselves as well, apparently. Okay, so uh, sorry, but you can't watch this. I think it's quite good. He dismantles this guy. This guy starts talking about facts and figures. And Moncton lets him waffle and he comes in and actually gives him the right facts and figures. And the guy, the guy actually got six minutes. <laughs> right. Uh, agenda 21. This is actual Agenda 21 itself. So let's dig a bit deeper. How much time have we got left, by the way? Is it, is it okay with you running through this, yeah? Right. This is important to know. So if the guys already know this. Uh, my, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm finding out most people don't know this. <coughs> uh, so, preamble. 
Now I've done a trial, I, I won't read the whole thing, but I won't read the whole, the whole thing, but preamble, I've cut some bits out of it. Humanity stands at a defining moment in history. <gasps> we are confronted with, a, I bet they see that in Roman times as well. Mm. Confronted with a perpetuation of disparities between and within nations, a worsening of poverty, hunger, ill health, and illiteracy, and the continuing deterioration of ecosystems on which they de depend for their well being. So, see all the things are brought together at the end of it as ecosystems. So, if you disagree with saving the planet, you also disagree with other stuff. So, you can't just say of oh, that, it's all or nothing. And depending for our well being, remember what I was saying about the judges now, it's the well being of the nation. That's near decision making, be through the government uh, and the local, the local government and the central government. Uh, of course, one of the biggest concerns is the well being of the nation. That's where it comes from. You see these buzzwords coming up now in the government stuff, right? However, integration of environment and development concerns and great attention to them will lead to the fulfillment of basic needs, improved living standards for all, better protected and managed ecosystems, and a safer, more prosperous future. I'm all for that, that's, that, sounds, that sounds good. How are you going to achieve that? No nation can achieve this on its own, but together we can, and a global partnership for sustainable development. So they've, see, they've built you up there, you're like, yeah, yeah, here's the answer. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You're in a partnership now, contract to arrangement, well done. Okay, next one. Uh, Agenda 21 addresses the pressing problems of today and also aims at preparing the world for the challenges of the next century. Excuse me, didn't I elect the government to do that? Isn't that what government's supposed to do? This is now like a, new, a new world government. I don't remember voting for this. It reflects a, you know, a global consensus and political commitment at the highest levels on development and environment cooperation. So it's continually mixing environment and development. You know, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you disagree with this, you hate polar bears, you know. If you disagree with me, you want to murder a puppy. This is what they're doing. A successful implementation is first and foremost the responsibility of governments. Thank you. That means the government's work for the United Nations. Eh? National strategies, plans, policies and processes are crucial in achieving this. International cooperation uh, should support and supplement such national efforts. Great. In this context, the United Nations system has a key role to play. Really? Oh, okay. Other international, regional and sub-regional organisations are also called upon to contribute to this effort. The broadest public participation and the active involvement of non-government organisations and other groups should also be encouraged. Okay, we see that's been subverted. All they do is replacing government with non-government now. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I, mean, I could waffle on about that. Genuinely, I could run through it all. But they talk about, they talk about financial. Uh, the development and environmental objectives of Agenda 21 will require a substantial flow of new and additional <laughs> financial resources to developing countries in order to cover the incremental costs for the actions they have to undertake to deal with global environmental problems and to accelerate sustainable development. Financial resources also require for strengthening the capacity of international institutions for the implementation of Agenda 21. So basically saying, give us more money. We need money to fund big institutions, to fund who, who's deciding where this money goes to. Right? I have no problem. I genuinely have no problem helping poor countries. Absolutely. If there's people out there dying and stuff, yeah. No problem. I joined the army to help poor people, but to try and try to save people in a bad way. But uh, what this really means is we going to take all our industry, we take all our jobs, we take all our good shit, and hand it out. And we've seen it now. We're seeing it now. Okay, this means if you look around this country now, you're saying there's no jobs. Where's the money going? It's been given away, given over there. Not by us, not by our governments, by the corporations. They, they can use this now to justify setting up sweatshops and wherever. Uh, it's, it's not going to well being of any country, it's just going to in terms of in corporations. Absolutely. I mean, there's, no, there's no country benefiting from it at all, really, is there? No. Well, I mean, there's minimal benefits. Of course, obviously, some sort of benefits. But I mean, when you get Chinese workers jumping off of Apple, or I was Apple, I, uh, Apple factories and stuff, and putting suits into the working conditions, you know. And some of the stuff I've I've seen and read because I've looked into this happening around the world. Uh, you know, is the world we're creating for many better than the world of God? These people actually want this first of all. 
<laughs> did, did they yeah, want this? Exactly. You're now working in a factory. We're going to take your farm off. You're going to take away your, your wealth. We're going to force you to live in a city and go. And, 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 I mean, so I mean, this is as you say, it's corporations. This is this is basically saying corporations. New game, guys. You're in charge. Do what you want. Okay. So the implementation of relevant program areas identified. Blah blah blah. So it's like economic section. Right. Uh, section one: social and economic dimensions. So now Jennifer is going to be saving the planet to social and economic. International cooperation to accelerate sustainable development in developing countries and related domestic policies. So we're getting involved in the policy making of other countries. I thought that was that was that's not what I, I, I don't want to get involved in the politics of other countries. Combating poverty, fair enough. Can change your consumption patterns, demographic dynamics, sustainability, protecting promotion of human health conditions. Promoting sustainable human settlement development. Mm -hmm. Right? What that means is take people out of the countryside and put them in own cities. That's what it means. Integrating environment and developing and decision making. Now you notice how important now the, the, the planning authorities are becoming really powerful. Really powerful. And this is how they're building the, the regional the new regions that's coming in as you built around the planning platform. Okay? Because of this. Okay? I'll read it all. This is essentially section two, conservation management of resources for development. Okay, who's deciding what, who's going to manage, who's going to manage by and who on behalf of and resources? You're aware that we're all known as resources, biological resources, uh, biological assets, human resources. You've all seen that in your five the places you work. Human resources. How many have actually taken umbrage? I hated that. I'm not a fucking resource. Like a box of pencils. <laughs> So, next one. Uh, section 3, strengthening the role of major groups. Oh, yes, it's interesting. Global action for women towards sustainable network development. Fine. Does that mean we just employ all women? Are we all so equal now? I, I, you know, should not be global action for equality. Uh, children and youth and sustainable development. Uh, right, are we getting to bring these puppy dogs out again? I've heard about the global action for women, which pops into my head. Yeah. Um, you know Bill uh, Gates' um, uh, uh, vaccination programme? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. The one he's doing in Africa? Yeah. yeah. Well, there was, um, there was a guy who spent 30 years vaccinating children in Africa. He was going around the villages. And what he found is, those years of time, because he didn't go back to the same villages every couple of years, he was finding that it was the girls, children, girls were dying. So therefore, yeah. the global action I dare comment. The message can put me to the ground. But, yeah, but, but you see what happens here? It's, it's, it's what they say is great, but there's layers. I mean, you're actually correct, there's layers. I mean, you have to read between the lines of this stuff. It sounds great in the first layer, but you should understand what you're talking about, no better information. You've actually there's four or five layers behind that. Built with the Bills of Exchange Act. Uh, recognising and strengthening the role of indigenous people in their communities. That's only when the United Nations recognises an indigenous person, right? I think of my red hair and blue eyes and, you know, the fact that I'm weak skin and all that, that I'm Scottish. You know, I've been here since you adult, you know, but I'm not recognised as an indigenous. It's only the United Nations, that's dangerous when the United Nations get to this. What's the role of indigenous people? The role of the indigenous you go with the bodies and roll them up in some barbed wire. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think it means empowering them within government. So, but it's who decides what an indigenous person is. Okay. Strengthening the role of non government organisations, partners for sustainable development. And that there is the big one. That is the big one. Right. It's buried in the middle. Non-government organisations and partners, just talk about private corporations that are running the world, and that is the big one. We've seen it now. Then local authorities' initiatives in support of Agenda 21. We'll go into local authorities in a minute. Strength the role of workers, trade unions, the role of business and industry, technical growth community, and the role of farmers. Next. I won't read through them all. Uh, means of implementation, section four, financial resources, mechanisms, so talks about transfer environmental sound technology, blah blah, cooperation and capacity building, 
international legal instruments and mechanisms. Whoa, 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 whoa. So that means that we're taking away our common law and replacing it with civil law. It's all here, guys. It's all in there. Uh, information for decision making. Who's making decisions? Who elected them? Next. Uh, this goes through the whole thing. But I mean, what I will bring out this this focuses on the local authority, which is where I'm coming to. Uh, in fact, two thirds of the two and a half thousand items of Agenda 21 relate to local councils. Okay. Each local authority has to draw up its own local Agenda 21, LA 21 strategy, follow discussion with its citizens of what they think is important to the area. Stop there. Each citizens, that's a killer. Each Stop there. Citizens, <laughs> that's a killer. So every local authority, maybe this is this is this is voluntary the local authorities, not obliged to accept us, right? Uh, I'll guarantee all of your local authorities now if you go through your council constitution say we only we now comply with Agenda twenty one. Hands up all those who've been consulted in that in the room. I wrote to you and unfortunately uh, Can you I had tell this us how to opt out of it though. Yeah, yes. You tell them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will. Uh, well, you, you tell them. You want to opt out of it. I'll tell you why. You don't. You, the thing is, you've never opted in. You just forced me down your foot. It's a presumption. Yeah, you just forced me down your foot. Presumption. I'm sorry, Barry. Yeah. I'll, go, I'll go into that, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go into that. support that. Now, unfortunately, this is, this is the corrupted version. I had this on a dongle. The letters I put on there have disappeared off the, the, the presentation. So there's a bit of panic as well as later. A bit of panic this morning trying to cobble this together. I lost all the letters I've got, but I've written to loads of, loads of places asking these questions. So it's not, whatever I say, I can back up. But, so, Wigan Council has said that, uh, the council that apparently says it's got authority over me, they're a private company by the way, not Wigan Borough Council, but anyway, Wigan Council has said in the, 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 the council constitution for Wigan Borough Council that uh, uh, Agenda 21 has now been implemented across uh, the borough. Hey. I would never voted that. <laughs> What's the French implications of that? And then you ask them, uh, uh, you know, FYs to them, right? Which what people need to do? You ask them questions like, so how did you, how did you get this? You say so you must have, you have discussion with citizens about what they think is important. It says there, right? So who, how did you, how did you get that mandate? How did you discuss with citizens? And then you get a page and a half of blur, right? It was, it was a focus group. So the next letter right in says, how many of that focus group didn't work for the council? You don't get a reply. Okay, so uh, anyway, yeah. So uh, these, these early 21s, right, you have to look into these, right? Now, I got this from the UK, oh, good deal. Uh, environment Agency, uh, Environment Agency, website, but anyway. So this is straight out, this is straight out of the literature, I'm not making this stuff up. LA 21 follows the principles of sustainable development and the goal of ensuring a quality of life for everyone, both now and in the future. Ah, oh, all the sustainable developments in there. Like Agenda 21, it focuses on an economic, social and environmental agenda. See, they're starting to widen how much, how much sphere of activity this has got. And develops solutions to problems through encouraging better, more efficient practices. Now, you guys, <coughs> uh, who have seen that circle doc when I was telling everybody about the controlling the human puppet. If you haven't seen this, it's a beauty. Go to Circle Institute and they've got a load of publications there. You can download the one controlling the human puppet. And you want to understand what Cameron is doing now. That is the document. I thought this is what developed the nudge thing. So you're nudging people right towards solutions. You're constantly, you don't tell them what to do. You just constantly keep the pressure on them, nudging, nudging, nudging them. And unfortunately, that document, they admit it's only ever been tested in rats. Uh, so it's saying so encouraging, so it's constantly just encouraging, encouraging, encouraging. Like, how, how do you define that word encourage? Is that just constantly putting pressure on us? Is that constantly brainwashing children and telling them lies? Is that is that using the law to encourage us? Don't do that because the law says to do this. That's what's happening by the way. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, how, however, sustainable development can only be achieved if we learn to think more sustainably and adopt more sustainable behaviour. What the? Yeah. You know, who writes this crap? So sustainable development, couldn't we achieve if we have sustainable development? We decide what that is and shut your face, do your do as As part of the local agenda 21 in Liverpool, for example, the public and city council have drawn up their own indicators to discover a successful development. Sustainable development. Which public? The public. Which public? <laughs> really? 
I'd like to look into that. So in Liverpool, can we get a report on that? And I'd love to find which public drew up, when they drew up, and if, if they drew, if they, they decided that much, and then the city council's taken that much from it. These indicators include number of parks, hot topic for Liverpool at the moment, is those new big parks, and people living close to them, education standards and crime figures, and Cheshire local authorities to set up a transport task group as part of this LA21. This seems to set up commuter plans to discourage people from travelling by car. Yeah. So this is constant pressure. I paid for the roads, I've got a car, I'll travel on it, right? I'll be sensible and I won't be using it for silly purposes. I'm not going to get myself a five litre monster, I'm going to get myself a little silly car. I don't anyone in the council who's driving a fucking three litre Jag themselves telling me I can't drive with 1200 cc buying around the town. You know, it's just wrong. Uh, you go to the council car park and have a look at the cars in that car park. These are the guys that tell us to live greener. Fuck you. Anyway. Uh, but, uh, so anyway, so the, the councils are now encouraged to partner between each other, right? So that's mergers, corporation mergers. Because councils no corporations, mergers, bigger, bigger, bigger mergers, you know. Uh, and then when the bigger, big, the bigger merger is, our vote gets smaller and more meaningless. So the bigger it gets, the, the, the less meaningful we become. Uh, so partnerships between uh, themselves, businesses, charity groups, and members of the public help them achieve a sustainable development of. So now we're, we're, we're now part of a mix of things they're working with rather than being the thing they're working for and that we are them and that's their primary goal. You see they've now, they've now reduced our standing now part of this, this partnership is equally within the other partners in there. Now that actually argue that we're actually below the private partners <coughs> now. Uh, anyway, so next. Right, I won't go into this in too much depth. Guys in Manchester, you really, really need to start looking into this gaggly crooks, right? Uh, GMCA, okay? And think of some big corporate names when you're looking at GMCA, because it does not represent democracy, it does not represent us, it does not represent our best interests, as a bunch of corporate gangsters getting control of cities. Liverpool City, Liverpool Direct Limited, I believe is a, a corporate venture in BT, Liverpool City Council and others, right? I believe from understanding, from what I've been told, and you know, I need to get this confirmed properly, as uh, the Liverpool City Council own 10% of that partnership. Okay, GMCA, Greater Manchester Combined Authority. Greater Manchester Combined Authority. Uh, we, the, we are in Manchester, Manchester, Greater Manchester. Uh, the pilot for the whole of the UK is called the Economic, Pro Economic Prosperity Boards. Okay and they don't like you to start talking about it. But uh, what they do is they, they hide behind us for the economic prosperity of the area, it's not, right? That's to bring in private partners. It's always double talk, <coughs> 1984 double speak, you know. Uh, so GMC, GMC was formed by 10 constituent councils, so they tell us. If you go to part to section two, article two of the GMC con GMCA constitution, uh, it says there it's, it's formed from the Metropolitan Borough Councils. From the 10 Metropolitan Borough Councils, right? I've got a problem with that. The Constitution for Wigan, and we've got Geis and Bolt, and in other areas as well, right? Uh, the, 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 the real council in Wigan is Wigan Borough Council. They have a Royal Charter, they have a grant of arms, we vote for them. That's where the councils sit, right? Who the fuck is Greater Manchester combined with who? Sorry, who the fuck is uh, Wigan Bur Metropolitan Borough Council? Who the fuck is Wigan Council? Who, and they've even brought a new one out. The Metropolitan Borough of Wigan Council. Right? Private. These are all private concerns, guys. Oh, Wigan Borough Council is the only one I deal with. Because it's the only one that's actually got a constitution. It's the only one I recognise. The other ones, you ask them. I phoned up last year asking the, uh, the uh, legal director of Wigan Council. Who are you? Who's Wigan Council? And he come back and said it's a non-incorporated corporation. Right, okay, you still don't answer my fucking question. Who are you people? Uh, can, can I see your formation documents? Can I see your, 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 the documents that construe you, you know, that incorporate you? Can, can I see them, please? No. So, what does that mean? Is it public or private? Private. Okay, that's my response then. Fuck you and fuck your private company, and nothing to do with you. Right? Uh, this, way, this, this is the bailiff part of the bailiff watch things, right? The this watch. is what it's called. This is straight off their website. Greater Manchester combined authority, they get their authority from the ten metropolitan councils. Uh, yeah, if you ask what authority the metropolitan borough councils have, 
it's sort of shrugs and well, it's blah blah. We well, don't admit is it's all statutory. We didn't vote for Metro Port and Borough Councils. Okay, we sent them Wiggins, okay. Uh, so then I phoned up Lancashire County Council and asked, does Wigan come under you guys? No. Nope. Then I phoned up GMCA and I spoke to a guy in there. Uh, does Wigan come under you guys? Are you the council for Wigan? No. Nope. I said, but I said, uh, I phoned up uh, Wigan Council and asked them, uh, who's, who's, good up? who's the who's the county council for Wigan? We are. So you your own county council? Yep. Well, there's no county council. We're independent authority. Right, but 1888 Local Government Act, and I won't bring it to death. I got a lot of letter back today from uh, Mrs Maggie Crosby. I've written to uh, Theresa May asking about the 1888 Local Government Act, Section 79, Part 2, which says all the, all the duties and liabilities of the inhabitants of the county will be have to be the duties and liabilities of the county council. And it's basically... That's what it says. I can't, I can't describe it any better. Uh, she talks about Wigan Council, the Borough of Wigan, now she calls it the Borough of Wigan, right? Wigan Borough Council, the, the Borough of Wigan, uh, does not fall under the jurisdiction of any county council. Note that. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's exactly the reply I got when I, when I wrote to them as well. Yeah. Right, uh, what they're doing is uh, dismantling the county councils and replacing them with uh, regions. So they do is they're breaking up into smaller units and then combine, recombining the small units into big units mm -hmm. to create the regions. Okay, we have a pilot in Manchester. Look at the call that the hub. Is that not the, the, like an evil mm -hmm. character of some James Bond looking okay, <laughs> thing? Isn't it? The hub. I mean, seriously. I mean, the hub. It's like what do they do? Preparing Greater Manchester to adapt to unavoidable effects of climate change. Who appointed them? Who appointed them to do that? Increasing awareness and understanding leading to behavioural change. Mm -hmm. This is from their own stuff, guys. Supporting Greater Manchester's collective 48% carbon reduction target. Greater Manchester, who's Greater Manchester? I'm not the Greater Manchester. So you decide this. Realising economic opportunities associated with transition to a low carbon economy. Turn that round is realising economic disaster. It's going to be happen as well, but see, they, they, they spin things properly. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying there's no climate change, right? Because I think old weather, right, for a start, right? And solar <laughs> storm, sun, right? Sun and volcanoes yeah, and all sorts of good stuff, right? But I'm not saying that we are not damaged. I'm actually an environmental engineer, so we do damage water and we do damage the soil, right? I've no problem with that, okay? That's genuinely, yeah, I've seen it, you know, I've worked on it, genuinely there. But when they start inventing <coughs> crap, that's my, and they start exaggerating it to us a thousand times bigger than it actually really is, yeah? So I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a climate denier. That's a new thing. You're a denier. <laughs> you know, it's a Holocaust denier, climate denier. You know, bloody hell. Yeah, well, just asking questions. Uh, the hub oversees the delivery of an implementation plan to achieve these aims, building upon the priorities set out in the Greater Manchester Climate Change Strategy. So remember, we're consulted in that ever. In fact, I wonder any people in Wigan actually know about this stuff, even though we're part of GMCA. I bet most people in Wigan don't know what GMCA is. There are five thematic, thematic, it's difficult to say what people say, thematic, and two cross-cutting work areas, buildings, energy, transport, natural capital. <laughs> natural capital. See mm -hmm. the way the, the terminology, how dehumanised is that? We're now natural capital. Fuck you, natural capital. <laughs> Sustainable consumption and production, low carbon goods and service sector growth, low carbon skills. <coughs> so, uh, so, uh, each of the subgroups is developing a work programme for 2013-14, which will be incorporated into a business plan by <coughs> June 2003. Keyword, incorporated into a business plan, right? Private. Excellent. Right. I could go on about a trick. Please read this up yourself. I just want to bring your attention. I don't want to teach you with GMCA because I've, I've, I've got a team of guys help me and they, they, they really know their stuff. They're way ahead of me and they've looked at this one. What the fuck are you doing up there? It's just a, a web of companies and. Rob, there's a fantastic website, at least in my opinion, anyway, uh, by a chap called Hans Schroeder. It's all the news. I love my carbon dioxide dot com. <laughs> uh, please have a look on that. <laughs> Apart from the fact of the funny name, uh, he's a scientist and he just presents science 
very, very interesting. I'm yeah. trying to get hold of him for a talk, but I can't get hold of him because I've slacked off that much. He's rebuked his email. As a few guys, mate. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. See, I'm not, I'm not going to focus on the, the, the reality whether or not there is weather, right? Uh, I just want to focus on how it's been politically manipulated, how it affects us. But yeah, absolutely. I'm, I've, I've read up a lot in that, that and I'm an environmental engineer, so I'm a bit more aware of it. It's amazing that they can take nothing and turn it into something. I don't think we have any effect on weather at all. I, mean, I think we have effect on pollutions. You know, sea and soil. Not, yes. not on the weather, I think it's all the... No, that's all chemtrails and stuff. Yeah, it's all hard and stuff. Yeah. Right, so... Anyway, so... Mentioned some names. The chair, or it's just as the sustainable consumption and production. So they've decided what's sustainable consumption and production. So they say how many people in you live here. This, uh, what was they called it? Natural capital, was it? <coughs> okay. The chair is Martin Hull of Cooperative Estates. <coughs> Deputy Chair Clive Memmott, Greater Manchester Chamber of Commerce. All private companies. Mm -hmm. Greater Manchester Climate Change Strategy recognises the core role. Sustainable consumption production plans play in delivering a range of interconnected objectives and they set out loads of crap, they loads of objectives, blah blah blah, it's all corporate and nonsense. Right, uh, this is the big one. The GMCA, so that's like the Greater Manchester Combined Authority, the AGMCA, it's Association for. Well, I forget what it is. Executive Board is a decision. It used to be the AGMA and they've now created the GMCA and they're still both there. Well, the GMC is taken over from AGMA. Executive Board is a decision making body for sub regional governments who get in Manchester. Really? Mm. Who voted for that? I thought I voted for Wigan Council to make decisions on me, Wigan Borough Council to make decisions on me. Who voted for them? Not one single person. It consists of the ten leaders of the Greater Man. By the way, German word for leaders, Führer. Just remember that, right? Mm. Okay. So it consists, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll translate in German here, it consists of the 10 Führers of the Greater Manchester local authorities and also who's uh, just made a lord. So all of you are pretending, think the feudal system doesn't exist, right? Wigan Council is now run by a lord. What does that make us? Serf. Okay, Dr. Peter Smith, he's got a dodgy doctorate as well. Uh, okay, I think he was bullied at school or something, that's not like that. It uh, consists of the ten leaders of the Greater Manchester local authorities and also representatives. So there's no even a representative body, it's just leaders. Mm. So the Führers, the lords, so these little feudal lordships all coming together into, into sort of a, a kingship now. Do you see this? The feudal system. And then representatives, this is where it gets good. Representatives of the Greater Manchester Fire, Fire and Civil Defence Authority. Now, I could talk more about this, I won't, right? I'm really good. The police authority, those are not the police, that's not a fire brigade. Right? And waste disposal authority. The board is supported by the wider team leadership comprising the relevant chief executives. Okay? Go on a whole. AGMA will continue to act as the voice of the ten local authorities of Greater Manchester, but it's much of a part of a much stronger partnership with the GMCA. I phoned up. Uh, Wigan Council and ask him a simple question. I says, uh, I've just read through the, the GMCA constitution that it says it's the Metropolitan Borough Councils that constitute the GMCA. Okay, Manchester combined authority. They look authority on their own. The authority is granted to them by the ten apart constituting boroughs. And I says, the problem is, I says, who the fuck's Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council? What authority do they have? She goes, what was the council? I says, no, it's not. The, co the constitution is Wigan Borough Council. You're, you're see you're working for Wigan Council. Who can you give me one key put me in touch with one person also for Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council? And she says it must be a typo. <laughs> How much money does it that hub this the hub? We'll start calling it the hub because that's what it is, smoking cats and stuff. <coughs> How much money do they handle every year? It's based upon a typo, their authority. We need to be digging guys. I mean all your Ananaki and whatever it is we're into, you know. This is where this is where the real meat lies. We need to start digging into who these guys are. And you guys are not from Manchester. Liverpool is a crack as a sitting target as well at the moment with Liverpool Direct. Okay? Start digging, writing letters, FOIs, going to kicking doors, you want answers. Who are you? Start digging deeper and deeper and deeper. Form teams, little research teams, and get this info. We need this info. Start digging into who the people are on the boards. Publish it. Share that information. Okay? So, 
Uh, this definition is the combined area means the area constituting of the areas of the constituent councils. Uh, so a constitution is used to form a corporation, so it's a big corporation. It's a regional, it's, this is the regionalisation of the UK. They knew they would get away with it democratically by asking us, so they're doing it sneakily. They dismantled the councils, the county councils, and then they took it out the borough councils, subverted every private companies, Capta, G4S, Serco, you pick your weapon. Uh, and now they're rebuilding the back up again to regions, but they've avoided having to think about a referendum on that subject. <coughs> yeah. The constituent councils means the metropolitan district councils. This is from the GMCA constitution, by the way. The metropolitan district councils, the local government areas of Bolton, Bury, blah, 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 right? So it's the metropolitan district councils. What is the metropolitan district council? Where do they get their authority from? What are they? Who are they? The GMCA means it can be, get Manchester Combined Authority, okay? Right, blah, blah, blah. Basically, it's the, the Greater Manchester Combined Authority Order 2011, right? Okay. That's where it gets real interesting, right? Now, was this, a, was this an act of Parliament? No, it's an order. So this was this huge change, fundamental change. I mean, it's like constitutional level change, right? Uh, dismantling county councils came from an order from one person, the Secretary of State who is not a public official, who is private, okay? She doesn't swear an oath of allegiance to the who Queen. Who doesn't sit to Asia Mayor? Yeah. So, uh, watch out for Secretary of State. She or he alone, right, is now issuing. This is a huge problem. I was reading through a report uh, from, uh, from, a, from, a, from a barrister's forum, and they are worried about this, how much power is now invested in individuals within government to make these huge sweeping decisions. So they're doing some subverting the whole acts and bills and the whole process of involving the House of Lords and debate and democracy and all that sort of, you know, uh, nuisance thing called democracy. And these guys can issue orders, orders themselves. How many people know that uh, parking debts, as they call it, parking debts, uh, are enforced under tenants, uh, distress for, of tenants rules? No, under, uh, sorry, under common law. Uh, so that it's, for, it's, it's designed for... Uh, 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 the distress was designed for where landlords need to deal with troublesome tenants. That's what they're using to enforce all, all road traffic debts. Right? Do I believe it? I posted it up in the Ashton Room. There's three orders were signed by the, uh, <coughs> uh, was it the Lord Chancellor? Uh, orders. Again, these orders are issued, all these orders. Distress is this disgusting. Yeah, stress is disgusting. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, absolutely. So that's what you can do for. Anyway, so I'm just showing the power of these orders. These orders are really powerful, and it's one person sitting there making a decision. And you find a lot of times when they issue the orders, it's been submitted to Parliament. Parliament's in recession, in recess. <coughs> but all Secretary of State are chosen for banking by the Royal Institute of International Affairs. I didn't know that, so thank you very much. Well done. Well, if you look at the Royal Institute of International Affairs, they're a non-government organisation, but they have connections to um, Committee of 300 and... Oh, and that's the... Uh, well, there you go, that's the circle, because you now see that going round now. Now, it's that, that, uh, that, that dodgy organisation, another one of these good use bond villains, uh, now deciding that Greater Manchester is now going to be a some sort of weird private entity with no democracy that just tells us what to do, barks orders like that is with the lords and the, 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 the kings and stuff, you know. So uh, they think to charge the transport, uh, uh, anyway, so transport's the big one, okay. But they're talking, so uh, they're, they're, and they're, info they're now invoking the Local Democracy Economic Development and Construction Act 2009. If you haven't read this stuff, guys, read it. Right, so this is where, this is where their meat really lies, okay. Next. Wigan Borough Council Constitution. So just if people don't believe me, right? It says there, meetings, plans and government advice the council should adopt as part of the policy framework. These are local agenda 21 strategy. I've got it confirmed they have adopted it. <coughs> okay, next. Uh, this is my comments. Wigan Borough Council that appears now to be economically dormant. Yes, they are. I've got... I've got uh, 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 Reports, okay. So Wigan Borough Council, remember that Wigan Borough Council appears to be people that are dormant. Wigan Council, different thing, refuses to provide any foundation documents or constituting documents to prove who and what they are. Yet they are the ones collecting council tax. They're the ones instructing the bailiffs. Yeah. 
Okay, these are the ones that are taking all the, the, they're the running everything. Again, yeah. But you ask them who they are and they slam the phone down, actually the fuse in the... Anyway. Mm -hmm. Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council appears to have zero de jure authority for the same reason. And therefore it must be questioned what authority M MWBC actually brings to get a Manchester Command Authority. Nobody can tell me. And you start asking questions and trust me, they dodge and dive and don't answer them. Now we have a new actor called the Metropolitan <laughs> Borough of Wigan Council. Who and what are they? When challenged, I've told you about the, 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 the typo. The council legal team now refused to answer any more questions on this subject from me, as uh, apparently stressing and upsetting the staff. I mean, I was. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right. Investigations into criminal activity such as institutional and electoral fraud and money laundering often does cause alarm and distress for people investigating. I have to wonder whether the stress and upset caused to recent people being bullied by corrupted magistrates, court bailiffs and the citizen support services used to be the council tax department it was a public body it used to be the council tax department they're now called citizen support service because they can't afford local taxation if that's a vehicle of concern to them don't think they'll sleep over other people getting upset and harm caused to them <coughs> anyway next one uh, i wrote to now this is where i've lost thought of the letters so i'm sorry I, this is this is the meat of it uh, Wigan, dear Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council, uh, this, is, this is through whatthenow.com. Please write copies of the consultation and decision making documents <coughs> which resulted in the United Nations Agenda 21 being included in the Wigan Council Constitution. So I've asked them, you've said you've got public mandate in this, yeah. where is it? Yeah, right? from, yeah. Okay, next one. Uh, so I've got this crap first of all, it's basically saying the Secretary of State recommends, no, she's just ordered. Hasn't recommended nothing, right? Uh, but as a recommendation, as a recommendation, it's not volunteering us. So what happens is the UN recommends to the states, the states then recommend DEFRA, as is, recommend to the, the local authorities. Did you know what DEFRA is now doing? The, now they're the ones that have created the modular constitution for the local authorities. DEFRA. No, I'm right, I'm right. Why is DEFRA doing that? <coughs> Who and what are DEFRA now? Okay. Uh, anyway, so. Basically, so it's, it's volunteer on the, the local councils. So basically, I was asking the question, what points will come obligatory on myself? Uh, so it's your following your advice and above guidance, the council included the title of strategy in its constitution as a partly government advises that the council should adopt as part of the policy, policy framework. So you see, they're always dodging the bullet there. Uh, but they have adopted it. They have adopted that, and that's agenda 21 is in the council constitution. Right, next one. And this is what I've given when I asked for the evidence and a, a, a further FOI I could given this. This is the meeting in minutes. And you know the blank, everything else out. What have they got to hide in that meeting? There's all been blanked out, you know. Because when we say it, you're basically saying that it was, uh, what is it? Uh, basically talking <laughs> strategy. Yeah, you're so small. <laughs> <laughs> They're basically talking, it's, it's a strategy committee. Essentially what's happened was a focus group. Right, my understanding it was a focus group. Right. Some as big as that. You realize the implications financially in this. We'll go in a minute. Uh, but the, 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 this is huge. It was put out. I mean, and the answer right to them right we say, how many people in this focus group were not employees of the council? Nobody replies back. Next one. So that's what I got. This is the shape. Go back. Right. Just give it a we quickly blast over what fraud is, okay? Uh, good website to go to. Action fraud. Right. Did you know Serious Fraud Office? It's, it's teeth pulled, it's claws pulled. Right. Uh, see this fraud office is now a toothless tiger, okay? And you've got private outfits run by primarily a big company called Serco. If you haven't heard of them, mm -hmm. look into them, mm -hmm. right? Uh, running all this now, okay? So when you're reporting fraud, you're no longer talking to the police. Yeah, that's why they call yourself action fraud. You're not see this fraud office or the police fraud. They're called action fraud, right? And it looks like a police department. It's not. This is happening everywhere. Everything's now privatised. Uh, so they say government agency scams and refers to send out official looking letters or emails to ask for money or personal information. <coughs> Wasn't that your council tax builders? <laughs> right. The, the correspondence gives the impression that they, this is their advice by the action fraud. The, co the correspondence gives the impression that they are from a government department and imply they have some form of authority. Council tax again. The letter or email might advise you you must register in order to comply with some kind of legislation for a fee. Electoral registration. Use it. These guys are active fraudulent, they're not the real councils. 
And you can see I'm not doing that because I'm taking action fraud advice. There's one solution for it. Excellent. Abusive position of trust. That's another type of fraud on no, the website. Definitely. This when someone abuses their position of authority or trust against another person for personal or financial gain or to cause loss to another. Uh, anyway, so there's a whole, you read this stuff yourself, but uh, fraud has been committed if money or assets are lost by the victim to the person in position of trust or authority. Okay, so anyway, next one. Asset misappropriation fraud. Uh, when it happens when people who are entrusted to manage the assets of our organisation steal from it. Mm. I've just shown you what's happened to Wigan Council. I can assure you now it's now an asset strip shell and all that, all that nice public land and assets are now <laughs> held, held in trust by private companies and security for debts. Okay, next. Council tax fraud, this is from the website. Uh, action fraud website. Council tax fraud is when a person deliberately gives incorrect or misleading information in order to pay less or no council tax. Let's turn it around. Council tax is when a person deliberately gives incorrect or misleading information in order to collect council tax. Okay. Next one. Impersonation of officials. I tell you it's interesting. See, you say to me, do you work for? And they go, what can council you say? What, is, what, what name does it say at the top of your wage slip? I'm not, I'm not obliged to divulge that information. You would if you were a fucking Wigan Council, you'd be happy to you, Wigan Council. I just answered my question. Uh, this is where fraudsters claim to be officials. Uh, so they make false officials to make false promises with tax rebates or land fees or customs payments or VAT payments, council tax payments. We've got to take a longer list. Council tax payments, parking fines. One of our guys went to the parking tribunal, was David in the living, came today. Uh, he went to, went to, eventually took the parking tribunal, Dublin got a parking ticket and he went to Manchester parking tribunal and he said to the judge, I'll pay when he can prove who they are. And they went for Wigan Council saying, we are the council. And the judge went, actually, yeah, I'll give you two weeks. So six weeks later, they get three pages of really intense legal argument about why they don't have to show who they are. <laughs> I'm a, I know nothing, guys. I'm, I'm an idiot, you know. I'm all wrong, I'm a nutter, apparently, to some people. Uh, anyway, next. Right, direct and indirect costs of Agenda 21 on you. Next. 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 <laughs> next. Next. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to tell me the ball was in your hand the whole time? Yes, it is, guys. Next. <laughs> next. <laughs> and next. Okay. So, I, the letters I had that I lost, they were, they were on this and it would be corrupted. But I was, going to, I was going to post some letters. Some of the guys in the Ashton room were already seen these. I wrote to Scottish Power, asked them the question, how much of... Because Scottish Power actually produced in their, their bill, they're the only outfit that did it. I don't know still doing it, to, to break down the bill. And there's one, pair, one part that says 12% VAT and government obligations. Maybe one of these awkward buggers, what does that mean? So I wrote to them, what does government obligations mean? They come back, it's... Uh, Climate change levy, green levy, social fund, and carbon tax. So, right, okay. Next letter. Which of these have I agreed to compete? Yes. Right? So they come back and go, well, well, no, you haven't actually, but we're obliged as a company, so we would pass the cost to you anyway. So, next letter was, isn't that slavery? Which we're going to. Isn't that slavery? Silence. Anyway, so, I can tell you now, that's, that's direct. Of your electricity bill, that's a direct, right, due to these extra levies and funds, right, 7% fact, okay. Now, how about the indirect agenda to own costs? How much is diesel now? How much is that down? How much, how much of that is down to agenda to own policies? Yeah, Look, all your, no, I read through some of the agenda to own policies just to give you a background so we can now have a sort of discussion, right. You look at all the indirect costs, how many, how many, Legal companies are they using? How many transport companies? How many shipping companies are they using? How many, you know, other services are they using? All these companies use electricity lighting. All these companies use cars. All these companies pay employees and deduct it from the, from the employees' taxes. And some of those taxes are going to government to pay for janitorial uh, policies. So all the way through the chain, so you can start that 7%, so they go... And I, re I mean, I'm reckoning it's probably 30 to 40% now. Uh, now you wonder why I'm seeing it more expensive. That's why. It's all voluntary. 
So I got a letter from Defra, uh, and I got I got to read, I got to confirm it again, and he did roll back confirmed again. It is entirely voluntary, right? Contract law. If it's voluntary and you don't object to it, what have you just done? Agreed. Just agreed to it. Okay. So what do you need to do now? Rebut. Rebut. Mm -hmm. Withdraw your consent, or uh, even more importantly, say I've misled you, fucking missold it to me. You, you sold this as being uh, uh, obligatory when in fact it wasn't. You haven't disclosed, and you're actually fro defrauding me. Fraud Act 2006, fraud by misrepresentation, fraud by fraud by abuse of uh, position. Okay, so indirect costs is the big question. We don't know that. Okay, next one. Right, what else? Everything, everything that is subject to statutory regulation, orders, or taxes. Every single thing. You buy a pair of shoes for your kid, right? How much did Jenna 21 policies was in the fact that made the rubber? How much, how much did they pay? The leather company, the sh shoelace company, the shipping company brought them over from China. The, 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 the shop for the people, how much taxes have they, I mean, uh, uh, Gen 21, have they paid in their, their taxes and stuff, you know, especially to the council for the rates. So you see the whole chain here. You can pick something simple like a pencil or a pair of child shoes. You can, get, you can start to appreciate how vast this chain is, and every stage of that chain is paying for the Gen 21 policies, which are voluntary. So it's everything. You buy a bag of chips, there's a Gen 21 policies in the back of that. Next. What to do? Write to every individual body to send you a bill of statement and ask him for a full accounting. Have fun with that. A full accounting. To include those elements throughout the supply chain that are voluntary or obligatory. You're obliged to ask that. You're doing due diligence because you're running your business, remember? A businessman would never pay a bill because somebody's paid, there's a bill for five grand. You see what's it for? Due diligence, you need to be doing this. You're running your own business. Due diligence, okay? So, so initially you're looking for disclosure. So you want them to say, well, okay, that, you're, you're having a bill here, but I don't remember agreeing to that. You know, uh, so what, what, what is the full contract? Uh, and you're asking for throughout the supply chain, not just direct, you're asking for indirect, throughout the entire supply chain, okay? Uh, that are voluntary or obligatory. Because if they're not, they're committing fraud. If they say, you've now, you've now raised the issue, they've now got to divulge information, otherwise they're, they're treading in a very dangerous water now. Thanks, so. If you're not convinced by the Agenda 21 hype, and I'm hoping that some people tonight might be thinking twice about the, the reality of what it's been used for, an alarm, then you have the power to withdraw your consent. You have the power. You can stop contributing to this erosion of democracy and your privacy. If you're told you do not have the power or authority to, draw, to withdraw consent, then is that not slavery by enforcing debt servitude on you? So where Scottish powers say to me, no, we've got to pay it anyway. Yeah. You agree to it, not me. Okay, next. Uh, I won't read through it all, right, but I just want to focus. This United Nations 1956 Supplementary Convention on Abolition of Slavery, Slave Trade, Institution and Practices, similar to slavery. This is the definition of what these words mean. This is the definition it's come from. Debt bondage. There's two definitions of slavery. Debt bondage is served from, right? Uh, that is to say, the status or condition arising from a pledge by a debtor of his personal services or lower those of a person under his control of security for a debt. So the Scottish powers have got themselves in debt to the government, apparently, right? Uh, and they're saying, I'm under their control, and I'm being used as a surety for their debt. Says it there, guys. Well, I can wait, I can read. Yeah, no big dictionaries required for that one either. Next one. Uh, now, slavery is now a crime in the UK since 2009, okay? I won't go through the whole thing. This is the, uh, I'll put it in there, I'll rush this before we go out there. But this is the Coroners and Justice Act 2009. Okay, section 71, right? Buried in the middle of that big document, by the way. What it does, it made slavery, servitude, and forced or compulsory labour a crime. Okay, so basically say if one person loses his enslaved in another person and they both know about it, it's a crime. <coughs> so, uh, just the, the Coroners and Justices Act 2009. Quote that, and they shit themselves when you quote that, and by the way, they shit a brick. Next one, we're not supposed to know this. Right, you are not a slave. Apologies for the thing here. Yeah. Okay, next, I think that's it. Okay, so... Essentially, you've got you've got some solutions here. What you can do is you can tie these guys up, right? I want a full accounting. They send you an accounting back. You know you're going to get crap. So you've got to say, actually, that's not a full accounting. Try again. 
I'm going to do my due diligence. Are you asking me not to complete my due diligence? Right? And by the way, uh, debt, debt, debt servitude and debt bondage and the Corner Justice Act you know, says, uh, you know, actually, you're not allowed to enforce those. <coughs> I, need to come, I, need, I need to agree to this. It's voluntary. There's a letter from DEFRA saying it's voluntary. So uh, keep uh, supplying the... Uh, Keep supplying the, uh, the, 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 the the accounting until I'm satisfied that we have it. We have actually decided what is voluntary, what is involuntary. Oh, and by the way, I don't consent to the, the voluntary stuff. And it's that simple. Now, if we all do that and there's no risk to this, you're not going to get in trouble. Nobody's going to be kicking your throat. You're just asking a question, aren't you? You can't pay a bill. Remember, the bills of exchange act, if those have studied it, requires a sum certain. Right? A sum certain. It's not a sum certain if it's part of it's voluntary and part of it's involuntary. That's not a sum certain. Only the bit that's, that's involuntary, only the bit that's obligatory on you is certain. When you start adding extras in, that becomes a little bit vague what a sum certain is then, right? So the Bill's Exchange Act, you can say I'm not paying this under the Bill's Exchange Act because it's not a sum certain as yet. We need to agree what the sum certain is. And you can tie them up in knots with us. And you can, we, if enough of us do this, we can stop them, we can stop them dead because they can never do a full accounting. How can they do a full accounting for the full chain? They can't do it. So the best, the best they can do then is send you through an estimated bill. Well, that's another load of fun when you get an estimated bill. Again, it's not a sum certain. So we can, we can, we can seriously tie them up with this and have the, I mean, they're going to have to hire an army of accountants. There's a lot of work in doing accounting for this. And if they do refuse to do an accounting, we can take it to equity court, which is another talk. We can take it to equity court and get for a, a full tracing. If they do, if they, if they do refuse an accounting. Take the fucking equity court, get a full tracing on it you're entitled to. But I let them take you to court. I'm not paying until I know what I've got to pay, guys. Well, what's obligatory? I'm not paying anything voluntary. I believe you're putting frauds. So until such times we can agree what is obligatory on me, I'm not paying. Or how's this? Like I'm doing at the moment. Uh, I'm assessing it's 40% of the bill. So I'll pay you 60%, withhold the 40% until such times as we can sort out that. So you've shown honour. Yeah, you're paying part of your bill. You're showing honour. You're holding some of it back until such time as they can prove exactly and prove every 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 penny prove that it's voluntary and involuntary. Can they do that? That's going to be absolutely going to cost them a fortune to do that accounting. We can tie them in knots. They've shot themselves in the foot with us, and it's so simple. There's no risk test. Anyone can do it. All you've got to do is just it's, it's template letters from one letter with three lines. We're going to have one of your accountants pulling his hair out for six months. Imagine 10 of us doing this for a company. So we can start doing this. Now what I'm doing is I'm saving up all my receipts now. Every single receipt from Boots and, who's that one? Esso, <coughs> Morrison's. I'm just saving up. Just every time I'm going to shop and buy something now, what I'm doing, I'm sending that receipt through with a letter to the company, saying I believe it. the large part of that is actually voluntary. You must sold it to me as being obligatory. So could you give me a full accounting for that, 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 that final value <coughs> and tell me much of that was obligatory and much was voluntary and here's, here's the address to send the cheque to, thank you very much. I've written to Revenue and Customs, can you tell me where to send these receipts to, uh, to claim back the money? Uh, because I believe that for a number of years now I've been misled. This was obligatory and actually it was voluntary, I was misold. And the Revenue and Customs, you have uh, breached, your, breached your position of trust because you should have told us about this. They should have told us that some of this is voluntary. They've been committing fraud. Yeah. And we've even paid tax and fraud. Okay, so uh, uh, that's, that's, that's the big solution. So what I did, I tried to build up the Agenda 21 because you needed to know about it. And the next thing was to try and give you the solutions to it. So you've got a, a solution there where you can just, you can really from there, take it as far as deep as you want. It's well, shallow, it's up to yourself. We can create template letters so people aren't comfortable writing letters. You just change the name of the company and change your name in it. We can just fire these away and sit back and watch the mayhem, mayhem begin. Because, I'm sorry, I didn't create this, they created it. I'm just trying to fix the problem. So if you get accused of going out of troublemaking, no. I'm just trying to, I'm doing my due diligence. Okay, so, any, any questions, I'll, 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 I'll well, go off. Well, you're still your website type thing. Is all that on your website? I haven't got a website. Oh, right. I thought it was the website. Oh yeah, free, free, free no high thrive in North West. I chuck most of my files on there, I think I've got 10 mega chuck on there. Rob, this is, Rob, just a point though, you know that they give the illusion of democracy or they say they've, uh, they've asked people for their opinion before they've gone with this agenda. Perhaps in hindsight, 
couple of years ago when they gave us uh, a referendum on the congestion charge, knowing full well that they'd lose it because they're taking money out of people's pockets. That was giving us the illusion of democracy. And they can always point back to that and say, well, we gave you. Yeah. Well, yeah, they'll, 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 play, they'll play that way every one. Doesn't matter if you say yes or no, that's the Irish. Did you know democracy means crazy people? <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, yeah? Democracy means crazy demon. <laughs> yeah, so it's always interesting to look into the words where they actually come from. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I was actually going to do my original talk to episodes so about the crown. What is the crown? And that is a big one. Like a real big one, right? But I've got some gaps getting filled at the moment, so I'll just save that for another day. Uh, that's an interesting one to follow up on. Right, so I'll leave it to that, eh, guys? So. Right guys, that's it. Thank you all for turning up. Thank you for your patience. Just again a round of applause for Ceylon, please. Thank you. And let's not forget Paul. Yeah.